Welcome to the BCS pregame show. New Orleans is a place of survival and spirit, of pride and strength. It's not a city, it's a state of celebration, reconstruction, reinvention. Tonight, it's the place where they come to reclaim their pride and to prove a point. Alabama never expected to be here. Their plan was Pasadena. There goes Davis! Oh, my God! Davis is going to run it all the way back! Instead, a loss for the ages kept the tie from the SEC title and delivered it to the Dome. Oh, my God! The last chance for AJ. The last game for CJ. The final four quarters of a program used to playing for more than pride. You expected Oklahoma to get here. With a quarterback by committee, with a committed defense, with a determined coach, the answer ultimately comes now. Sugar Bowl from New Orleans and our matchup the Big 12 in the SEC number 11 Oklahoma and third ranked Alabama Nick Saban almost unfamiliar territory for him and that it's not a national championship game tonight but it is the final game for a sensational quarterback named A.J. McCarron on the other side Bob Stoops has been in all four BCS games and a BCS national championship and has also won one and it's been quarterback by committee for him this year between Trevor Knight and Blake Bell. And we welcome you to New Orleans, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. And partner, I think back, it seems like yesterday, you and I are in Tuscaloosa, and we're watching this tall, skinny kid yeah. throwing the ball around on the scout team. And tonight, A.J. McCarron's making his 40th career start. Yeah, his former coordinator, Jim McElwain, used to call him Big Bird, weighed about <laughs> 175 pounds when he first got to campus. And we've watched this guy develop over his career. I remember his first start at Penn State. I did that game. He was asked to just manage the game. Don't make mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. Get us into the right place. Play to the strength. And then as he's developed in his career, he's gone from game manager to difference maker. He's had a brilliant career, and he plays his best football on the biggest stages in the biggest games. He's had a marvelous career, 36-3 and three as a starter, hopes to finish it off with one more tonight. Everybody would like to have one like A.J. McCarron, yeah. and Bob Stoops, I'm sure, would too, but it's been quarterback carousel for his yeah. team this year. Well, partly because they weren't sure who was going to start when they opened the season, then they had some injuries. They went with Trevor Knight to start. He started two games, bung, banged up a knee. They had to go to Blake Bell, changed their offense a little bit. Bell played great against Notre Dame, went back to Trevor Knight at the end of the year, but couldn't have beaten Oklahoma State and gotten to this game without Blake Bell coming off the bench. But tonight, they're both healthy, and I think Trevor Knight gives them the best chance to be successful against this rugged Alabama defense because he is a more of a dual threat runner with the zone read type offense. The last time Alabama faced a quarterback in an offense like this, the end of the season against Auburn and Nick Marshall, and they had all kind of problems. Trevor Knight at 6'1", 200 pounds, is not as big as Blake Bell, but he's a shiftier runner, can make people miss and attack the perimeter of this Alabama defense. They want to run the football. He also needs to hit some play action passes, most ideally on rundown situations. The good news is with almost a month between games he's as healthy as he's been in quite some time let's head down now third member of our team on the field is Holly Rowe Holly well thank you Bob Stoops is keeping it a secret right up until kickoff who he will actually start at quarterback and that has made preparation for defense of Alabama very difficult they've actually used a couple of different scout team quarterbacks Cooper Bateman a big physical running back has also played quarterback for the scout team to give them a good look at a mobile quarterback but then they've gone to their second string quarterback Blake Sims who's a mobile guy but has a little bit better arm and they've taken him from the second team and asked him to run the scout team two or three periods per practice. 
Now, they said that they had this similar situation last time that they faced a team with two quarterbacks when they played LSU in the national championship game. They didn't know if they would face Jordan Jefferson or Jarrett Lee. So they didn't try to do too much. They said they didn't script too many different things for those guys. They didn't want to confuse their defense. They have prepared a similar way for this team. They want to get better against a mobile quarterback. Those have hurt them this year, of course, with Johnny Manziel and Nick Marshall of Auburn. All right, Holly, there's a whole lot of crimson in this building tonight. Crimson and cream, crimson and white. Nothing so sweet as Saban. Well, we'll see if that is true in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Reese, Mark, and Lou down on the set. They'll bring you a lot more pregame festivities when we come back in a minute. This BCS pregame show is brought to you by Expedia. Expedia helps 30 million travelers a month find what they're looking for, one traveler at a time. Aerial coverage from New Orleans provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned, making tires that go the distance, inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. BCS pregame show for the All-State Sugar Bowl rolls on as we close in on kickoff between Oklahoma and Alabama. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May with you. The Million Dollar Band is on the field from Alabama. Little energy starting to be detected in the building as these two blue bloods get set to take off. So. Alabama's a heavy favorite, 17-point favorite. What is it that's going to determine this game, Mark? I think C.J. Mosley and this Alabama defense stuffing the running game of Oklahoma early and often, making Oklahoma a one-dimensional offense, them having to throw in the football, I think that's the key factor. I think it has to be the confidence of Oklahoma. And they're going to have some adversity. Are they going to be confident enough to respond from it? The one thing that they point to, Texas A&M and Missouri have done pretty well in the SEC. Two years ago, we are playing them in the Big 12. They aren't any different in the SEC. That's what they think. We'll find out. And then again, last year, Oklahoma didn't do well against Texas A&M <laughs> in the Cotton Bowl, but a redemptive opportunity for the Sooners against Alabama tonight. You mentioned C.J. Mosley. He has a big night, 15 tackles. He'll become Alabama's all-time leader in tackles. If I had you make a case, perhaps in the court of the final verdict for Oklahoma, how would you make a case for the Sooners winning this game? They're going to have to make sure that they win on first down. Some way, somehow, pick up five yards plus on first down to make it second down manageable. Because if they get the third down and seven and plus, it's all in Alabama's hands because they can put pressure on the quarterback and they'll win this football game. They have to make sure they win on first down. If they can get the five yards on first down, got a shot. I'll tell you what I think gives them a chance. They've had five weeks to prepare. I wouldn't be surprised if they changed their offense completely. They ran the option. They did a variety of different things. The zone read, all kinds of things that discombobulate uh, Oklahoma, uh, Alabama. I think that's what gives them a chance. It's the unexpected, I think that's why he won't predict who his starting quarterback will be. He may play each one a different play. I talked to Stoops and Saban yesterday. Both echoed various sentiments that bowl games are really one-game season. Sometimes you can't take a lot from what's happened in the regular season or what might happen next year. What I do want to know from you, what's going to happen tonight? Who wins the game? Give me a score. I think Alabama wins a game by 14, 35, 21. They pull away in the fourth quarter, very close for three. I think Alabama comes out throwing haymakers early. They establish themselves as a dominant football team and they continue to pour it on. Alabama wins this game 48 to 10. You remember what <laughs> happened in this game last year when everybody was picking Florida to take Louisville apart? Yep. And then everybody got surprised. But is the difference Teddy Bridgewater's not walking through that door yeah, for no. Oklahoma? They, they, they say Florida. This Alabama, <laughs> I want to tell you, that is different. In, in terms of how the season will be remembered, obviously Alabama's built its expectations to the level that one loss is almost catastrophic. How does a win here tonight change the perception of the season for the Tide? Because that one play that beat them, that, that play that that 100 yard return by Chris Davis that everybody remembers I think they just want to eviscerate that off the map and if they come out there and they put up 40 or 50 points and they roll over a team like Oklahoma just the name Oklahoma you roll over them in the Sugar Bowl I think that erases that they can say we're the best team in the country we were just unlucky but let's remember this 14 straight years Bobby Bowden had Florida State in the top final five now that is impressive what Alabama's done is equally as impressive. 
It's also a, very, a lot of consistency from Bob Stoops. He's been to all of the BCS Bowls during his tenure there. He's now taken Oklahoma to nine BCS Bowl appearances, just three and five in those games. Does have a national championship. The Sooners would like to get a victory over Alabama tonight as we join our public address announcer in the Dome. Ladies and gentlemen, we would ask that you please rise and join Brian Batt in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave A sparkling rendition of the national anthem from Brian Bat as we close in and get ever closer to kickoff of the 2014 All-State Sugar Bowl. Alabama and Oklahoma getting set to square off from New Orleans as we close in on kickoff. Eminem helps us get there. championship series Superdome in New Orleans the 80th Sugar Bowl and the Sooners of Oklahoma 10 and 2 on the year playing in their seventh All-State Sugar Bowl here come the Sooners You look at these two programs, both decked in crimson. There's a lot of similarities. And there's a lot of national championships between Oklahoma and Alabama. Ten on one side, seven on the other. National titles in the poll era. Bowl appearances, 47 and 62. Victories, 27 and 34. There's never been a game with two teams that have combined for that many bowl victories. And all-time wins, they're pretty close. 841 and 838. And on the other side, the defending national champions who lost just one game this year, a heartbreaker to Auburn. And here comes the Crimson Tide of Alabama. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. And if you're just joining us, we welcome you again. Brad Nessler with Todd Blackledge here in New Orleans. Day two of 2014. And two, 
two of the great programs in all of college football history, Todd, and two great coaches as well. Absolutely. I mean, Nick Saban and Bob Stoops combined have won over 320 games as head coaches. Very similar. They're both tough-minded guys, defensive-minded guys. And, you know, it's interesting. Oklahoma, their staff went and spent time with Alabama, switched to a 3-4 defense. They led the Big 12 in total defense this year for the first time since 2006. Alabama led their league in defense for the fifth year in a row. Defense will be the name of the game tonight. It should be a very phys physical game. And what Oklahoma does well is run the football. What Alabama doesn't let you do <laughs> is run the football. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting matchup for tonight. The fifth time these two teams have met in their history. And as the captains walk out on the field, C.J. Mosley, the Butkus winner, Kevin Norwood, and A.J. McCarron making his final appearance as the quarterback for the tie. And the Sooners captains on their way out as we're just about set for the coin toss. And we send it down to our referee from the ACC, Brad Allen. Gentlemen, welcome to the 2014 All-Day Sugar Bowl. Congratulations on an outstanding season. I'll show you the coin. The Sugar Bowl logo is heads. The team's emblems are tails. Dennis Haysbert, Golden Globe nominee and All-State spokesperson will flip the coin for us. I need your option, Oklahoma. Heads or tails? Heads. The call is heads. Dennis. It is heads. Oklahoma, you've won the toss. You're going to defer your option. Oklahoma has won and has opted to defer. I assume you will receive. And which direction will you kick? We're going to kick this way. All right, Oklahoma will kick. O Alabama will receive on this end. Good luck, gentlemen. So the Tide will get it first offensively. And down on the field to Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Saban, you said that in that last loss, attention to details was crucial for your team. What are the details that you've got to pay attention to tonight? Well, we just got to finish plays and, you know, execute with more discipline. And in critical times in the game, we didn't do that. So, you know, it's all about how bad you want to do it, what kind of effort and toughness you're going to play with, and what kind of discipline you're going to have to execute. But, you know, the last time we played, we got to watch somebody else celebrate. So, you know, if we want to go earn it. It's going to be up to us. And, you know, that, 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 that should be enough motivation for our team. Coach, mobile quarterbacks at times have been a challenge for your team this year. What have you learned from defending guys like Johnny Manziel, Nick Marshall, that you can improve on with mobile quarterback tonight? Well, I think we got to stop them running, first of all. And their quarterbacks are so, certainly capable of making plays, running the ball as well as scrambling. And it's just something that you got to have a lot of discipline on defense to stay in your pass rush lane, affect the quarterback. Uh, and when he scrambles, you know, we got to stay in coverage. And, you know, it's, it's been an issue for us in the past. We've worked a lot on it in practice, so hopefully we'll do it well tonight. Thank you. 165 wins on one side, 159 for Bob Stoops on the other side, including a national championship as well. And he's been in all the BCS Bowls. Their only losses this year to Texas and to then fifth-ranked Baylor. And, of course, the Tides only blemish the heartbreaker in the Iron Bowl to the Auburn Tigers. You know, when you play in a bowl game and you've had a long layoff, and both these coaches mentioned it, a couple things you worry about or are concerned about. Tackling, because you don't do much live tackling, and special teams, you don't do much live special team work. Right away, Oklahoma will be tested. They're 108th in the country in kickoff coverage, and Alabama has done a pretty good job with Christian Jones running back kicks. He's got one touchdown to his credit this year on a kick return. Nick Hodgson's got it teed up. Christian Jones and DeAndre White are waiting on it on the other end. There's not an empty seat in the house. Everybody wearing the same color. <laughs> The 80th All-State Sugar Bowl underway. Christian Jones has it go between his hands. And Alabama will bring it out with A.J. McCarron. What a career. We talked about a little bit earlier in the pregame show. 36 and 3. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and again, the thing that I like about him as he's developed in his career, he has played his best in the biggest games. 
national championship games against ranked opponents. That's when he has played at his highest level. Certainly it helps to be able to run the football the way Alabama has done, but A.J. McCarron is much more than a game manager during his career in Alabama. Great balance for the tie. They average 218 on the ground at 277 in the air per ball game. P.J. Yeldon is the tailback on the first play from the 25, and it'll be a quick throw complete out to Amari Cooper, and Cooper tiptoeing down the sideline. Nice gain on the opening play of the ball game, a pickup of 15. As we take a look at our impact players tonight, uh -huh. Amari Cooper and Christian Jones not only as a receiver but as a return man. On the other side, Eric Stryker, they play him all over the place. Not the biggest guy, but it's a perfect name for what he does. And Aaron Colvin is probably healthier than he's been in quite some time, and he's a key in the defensive secondary for OU. 15-yard pickup on the first play, so first down at the 40. And now McCarron in the gun. And that's O.J. Howard, the freshman tight end in motion. The throw to the far side. Cooper again. Cooper another first down and a lot more. Amari Cooper, one man to beat. They drag him down, but not before he's inside the 10-yard line. First two plays of the game, Alabama comes out in a run set. Two tight ends. Both times they make quick throws to Amari Cooper and then let him do his thing. When he is healthy, he's as good a receiver as there is in college football. Bothered by a toe injury for a good portion of this season, healthier now than he's been at any point during the football year. And just like that, Alabama in the opening 50 seconds has got it. First and goal at the OU 7. T.J. Yeldon hasn't touched it yet. He will right here. Yeldon down near the one. Frank Shannon brought him down, but he got six. When Oklahoma revamped their defense this year, they did it to play in the Big 12 against spread offenses. They put a lot of speed on the field. They're not as big as other teams that they, uh, you know, that maybe they used to have, but they're very fast. They're not necessarily built to line up against these big heavy sets that Alabama is showing right now down by the goal line. Of those 41 scores you saw in the red zone, 34 have been touchdowns. Second down and goal. Bogler, the tight end, the extra blocker in the backfield. Yeldon, touchdown. T.J. Yeldon, his 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Great job by Ryan Kelly, the center, who missed the Auburn game. Ari Kawanjo, the left guard. They just paved the way for an easy touchdown for Yeldon. Cade Foster in for the point after. Seven nothing, Alabama. Amari Cooper, an impact player, I guess so. First a 15-yard pass, then a 53-yard pass play. Got it down to the seven-yard line. T.J. Yeldon next in line. One yard touchdown, and in a hurry, the tide seven on it. Fifty-six yarder. It's got leg. No, does not have the leg. Brought back to the near side. 45-50. There goes Davis. There's nobody there for Alabama. He ran it back a hundred and nine yards. Auburn's gonna win. Alabama fans are saying, why do you have to show that again? The reason being, all week long or leading up to this game, a lot of people wonder about the motivation for Alabama. Well, I think we got our answer in a minute and 49 seconds. Absolutely. Looks like a focused football team, and A.J. McCarron, one of the key leaders on this team, he and T.J. Yeldon have played their best football in the biggest games. Cade Foster to kick, Brennan Clay and Roy Finch, the two top tailbacks for Alabama, wait at the goal line. This will be Roy Finch from about the three, and man, and the ball is out as well. Was he down or not? He was, wow. but what a hit he took on the kick return. D. Hart got him right about in the heart. Now, Alabama.
Alabama special teams for the most part this year have been outstanding. There's been a few games, the Auburn game one in particular, where it let them down, but a great way to start your defense with a long field behind him. D. Hart with an excellent one-on-one -on -one tackle. Finch is going to feel that one for about a week. OU has to start inside its own 14, 15-yard line at the 14. And it's Trevor Knight, the redshirt freshman at quarterback, in the pistol. He'll throw on first down. High, but caught. And a pickup of eight out to Bester. Here's the numbers on the season for Trevor Knight. That's a good thing, getting him started with a completion. Again, throwing on first or second down, much better than third against Alabama. Clay trips himself up and got about a foot, so it'll bring up third down and short. Impact players play. They need a big game out of him. Jalen Saunders, a little guy, but they play him in a lot of different positions, and he can really do some wonderful things in space. C.J. Mosley, the Buckus Award winner, and HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, one of the best defensive backs in college football. When Saunders is outside, he's more of a vertical threat. When they put him inside in the slot, they try to find the right matchup for him on option-type routes. Oklahoma, 39%. Third down conversion team. They get one here when they needed it to kind of quiet the Alabama crowd a little bit. Clay needed a yard. He got two. Again, when the quarterback is Trevor Knight, he is a dual threat, and they run a lot more zone read than they do with Blake Bell in at quarterback. And that is a, a challenge for this Alabama defense. Going to throw on first down again. Clay out in the flats. And he got four before he's knocked out of bounds. Right away, we see a couple things that, that Oklahoma wants to do. Number one is play with some tempo. They said the two teams that gave Alabama problems this year, Texas A&M and Auburn, both played with tempo and also throwing on early downs for their young quarterback. You want to avoid, against both of these defenses, third down and definite passing situation. Finch comes in now in the backfield for Oklahoma. And here's Knight on the carry, and he got hammered right at the line of scrimmage. Eddie Jackson made the play from the secondary. Eddie Jackson there, and Adrian Hubbard from the backside did a nice job chasing that play down. Took a good angle to the football as well. Now they picked up their first third down. This one's longer. Third down at four. When you get to third down, that's when Alabama likes to bring creative pressures. They're not a heavy pressure team on first and second down, but third down is when they like to come after the quarterback. Knight, quick slant, got it. Nice throw and catch. Got it to Jalen Saunders. And it's a first down, Sooners. You look at Jalen Saunders, you say, how is he going to survive playing this kind of football against physical teams? He's very small in stature at 5'9", 160 pounds, but very, very tough. In fact, the coaches say so tough it rubs off on the rest of the team, which is a good thing. And quickly, Sterling Shepard out on the edge. Landon Collins ran him out of bounds. And OU on the move and yep. hurrying it up. At the 47-yard line. Alabama has some depth issues up front. They have some injury issues in the back end of their defense. Tempo can be effective against them. And Clay got five and a first down into Alabama territory. C.J. Mosley, the unquestioned leader of that tied defense. This is his final game in an Alabama uniform. Down the seam, and it is intercepted by Landon Collins. Saunders had a hand on it. But the Alabama defense comes up with a first turnover of the game. So Oklahoma had something working. Saunders, he's an inch taller. It might be a touchdown. Instead, it's going the other way. Alabama with a 7-0 lead, and they've got it on offense when we come back. The 2014 Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Nissan and the all-new Rogue. 
Nissan, innovation that excites. AT&T, rethink possible. Capital One Bank, official partner of the BCS. And Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live mas. Some of the great moments from All-State Sugar Bowl's pasts. You had a pretty good night here one year. Yeah. I was here to watch you. That was a fun one. <laughs> Seven nothing Alabama. They had nine plays and they had it going in the right direction before the interception. So Alabama's got it back at the 24 yard line. Landon Collins second interception of the year has given it back to A.J. McCarron and McCarron's going deep and he's in traffic and it's intercepted by Gabe Lynn. So just like that the Sooners get it back. Very rarely do you see A.J. McCarron force a ball. He's looking at Kevin Norwood the whole way on this. Number 83 in the slot is going to actually be double covered with a safety over the top. And Gabe Lynn is there for an easy interception. Again, you don't normally see A.J. McCarron force a ball into coverage. That time he did. Did he ever? That's only the sixth interception suffered by McCarron this year, but right back to the OU yeah. offense now at the 45 yard line. And you know, we were going to show a replay of the Oklahoma interception before that play. The tempo really had Alabama off balance. The throw just a little high, but the tempo was effective for Oklahoma on that opening drive. Night play action. Might want all of it right here. And it's complete down the sideline. Bester. Touchdown. Colton Bester, 45 yards, scoring toss. Excellent protection. Trevor Knight stayed in the pocket, and I think Landon Collins, who got the interception the first possession, went for it, went underneath the throw, didn't get a hand on it, and Oklahoma got a touchdown instead. They're reviewing this as they would every scoring play. It was called a touchdown. I don't know. If his toe is out right there or not, it's close. Well, the ball, I mean. <laughs> the ball was over the goal was, line when his yeah, toe was there. That's a tough one. Ted Jackson is our replay official. Riley Johnson from the ACC is with us up here in the booth. Riley, what are they looking at right there? Whether or not his foot was out. Yeah, Brad, they're uh, they're checking just to see, kind of piecing the uh, puzzle together to see where the ball was when the toe may have touched out of bounds. It almost looked like he somehow kept his the ball of his foot like airborne right about there and like it didn't touch. It seems impossible. <laughs> but what an effort. And it was ruled a touchdown on the field. So we're going to wait on the official review before we talk about whether or not we're going to have a tie game here in a second and they have made their decision here's a call after further review the ruling on the field stands touchdown well i tell you what i'm impressed with is the confidence that bob stoops and josh hypo and jay norvell have in trevor knight he throws the interception on the first possession they come right back after the turnover call a pass play and he stays right in the pocket and delivers a strike for the touchdown. Michael Honeycutt in for the point after. Up and good. So we had back to back interceptions which you don't see often. And did Oklahoma take advantage of getting it back? They sure did. Knight, Bester. All State Sugar Bowl, Sooners and Tide, Tide at seven. to the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. And man, am I glad we're inside because the wind's blowing <laughs> oh, about man. 40 miles an hour out there. Hey, partner, if the next 55 minutes goes like uh, the rest or the early part here, I think we're in for yeah. a fun time. 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> 
I'm impressed with Trevor Knight. You know, the coaches told us these extra 12, 13 days of practice have been so valuable for him, not only to get healthy after the shoulder injury from Oklahoma State, but just to get more comfortable with their offense, particularly the passing game portion of it. He's off to a very good start. The kick will take Christian Jones in. He'll just let it go over his head. And we'll come out to the 25-yard line. Number one, Florida State. And number two, Auburn. You can see it eight different ways with BCS Megacast starting at 8 Eastern on Monday. We'll cover the Vizio BCS National Championship from every angle on all our ESPN networks. It'll be a unique way for you to watch that national championship game. You can visit ESPN.com slash Megacast to figure it all out. It's all way over my head. So far, A.J. McCarron threw one over his receiver's head, and that turned into an Oklahoma touchdown. Alabama has had four first down plays. They threw on three of them. I would expect to see him get yelled and back involved in the run portion of their offense. They've got Fowler, their fullback, in there, and he'll follow Fowler, spinning his way for a couple, but Frank Shannon, the middle linebacker, makes a nice play. Look out, we're going to have flags flying around here pretty soon. And no penalty marker down on the play as Cyrus Quanjo and Charles Tapper got tangled up. This Oklahoma defense lost a couple key guys early in the season. Corey Nelson, their leader, the glue of their defense, the quarterback of their defense, best linebacker injured in the TCU game. Frank Shannon has kind of had to pick up the slack from a leadership standpoint, and Dom Dominique Alexander took his place on the field at that position, a young freshman. Jordan Phillips, the other guy they lost was yeah. there, number one nose tackle. McCarron, there's his first throw since the interception, and he's got DeAndre White off to the races. White, all the way down around the 10 yard line. This ball could not be thrown any better or with any better time than when A.J. McCarron threw it. Back shoulder throw, perfect timing, perfect spot, impossible to defend for Sanchez, but again, we see the poor tackling after the catch. Oklahoma has had people in position to make tackles after the catch, but they've not tackled well so far, and they've given up some big gains in the past game. Right at the 10-yard line after a 63-yard pass play, career-long catch. Has him first and goal at the 10. P.J. Eldon not going to get away from Dominique Alexander, the newcomer of the year defensively in the Big 12. Freshman out of Tulsa. Yeah, he's not really a freshman anymore, you know, because he was forced into yeah. action early, played the bulk of the season. At this point now, he's into his sophomore year. Very talented guy, 6'2", 216 pounds. And the game is starting to slow down a little bit for him. Amari Cooper comes down to the bottom of your screen. Kevin Norwood to the top. Ball just shooting inside the 10-yard line. Second down and goal. Keep your eye on Stryker right here. Their best pass rusher. McCarron looks left, right, under pressure. And somehow he got it down to the five-yard line. A.J. McCarron, again, usually protects the football very well. Uncharacteristically through that interception on the first possession, here he gets what he can get and then gets out of bounds. And he wasn't crazy about the push out of bounds around the back of his shoulder pads. Third down and goal. O.J. Howard's the biggest target. His yeah. tight end in a slot on the left side. McCarron in the shotgun. On third and goal to the corner, and he overshot the guy that got him down there close, DeAndrew White. And we got a camera guy down, at least he's smiling. Kaz Everett was back there covering. Well, Oklahoma really sold out. They brought everybody, they played zero coverage. There was no safety help, it was all single coverage. Knowing that they had the end zone, they didn't have to play depth and they forced the throw away by A.J. McCarron. Alabama had some trouble against Auburn, that's for sure, in the field goal department. This will be a 22-yard attempt by Cade Foster to try to give the tie the lead back. And 
Several flags down before the snap. False start. Offense, number 42. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Yeah, really, it was problems in the kicking game against Auburn more than anything, or as much as anything. They also gave up 296 yards rushing to the Tigers, <laughs> but some missed field goals. They had a punt partially blocked. Of course, gave up the big return on the, the long miss on the final play of the game. So that's a 27-yard field goal attempt. And it's up, and it's good. Seven minutes, two seconds remaining in the first quarter. Alabama regains the lead. They had a long pass play to DeAndrew White, a 63-yarder, but that tackle right there saved the day, and it's only a three-point difference. Our aerial coverage from New Orleans provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear's learn making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Back inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, the drive for the Tide was 65 yards, but they had it first and goal at the 10 and had to settle for a 27-yard field goal. 7.02 remaining in the quarter, and it's 10-7, Alabama. Finch took a wicked hit on his first kickoff return. He and Brennan Clay again back waiting on Cade Foster's kickoff. Yeah, I bet he's telling his guys in front, find number one, block him this time. <laughs> he hard. And it's going to be Finch again from about the four. And this time he goes down after he got across the 20, but nice kick coverage by Alabama. Only a 16-yard return. Now, when I want to go back to the long throw by McCarron. Even against tight coverage, timing and ball placement win every time. You can throw the ball against tight single coverage if you throw with timing and you place the ball correctly. That's good coverage, but an even better throw, and it results in a big play for Alabama. A lot of times you think if the coverage is that close and that good, you can't throw to that guy. Timing and ball placement beat tight coverage every time. And A.J. knows how to mix it up to his receivers. Three of them had 36 catches coming in. DeAndre White had 29 before that long gainer. Sterling Shepard. Oh, nice run by Shepard. We get it out for about five, maybe six. Where Auburn hurt Alabama's defense. Again, they ran for 296 yards. Most of that Trey Mason and the quarterback, Nick Marshall. A lot of perimeter runs. When you run on the perimeter, you force safeties and corners to take good angles to the football. Here's Saunders again. Collard after a first down. And Deion Blue is the guy that brought him down, but they'll move the chains. And Oklahoma comes right back to the line of scrimmage. They have not huddled it yet. Keith Ford in the backfield with Trevor Knight for the first time. Knight comes up fire and far side. Nice move by Bester to make the first guy miss, kept his balance and got five. The other reason that tempo is effective against Alabama is Alabama is a big check check defense. They want to they want to try to call the perfect defense and check to the perfect defense for every play. And when you go especially fast, it makes it difficult for Kirby Smart and the guys on the field to make as many checks. Now, Oklahoma slowing down on this second down play, but the tempo that they've mixed in has been pretty effective. Second down and five. Knight looks to the sideline and in the pistol. He'll give it off to Ford, and Ford's got another first down and back in Alabama territory. Keith Ford, the freshman out of Cyprus, Texas, gets a dozen. Nick Saban said putting the back in a pistol formation directly behind the quarterback makes it a little bit more difficult because he can hit that line of scrimmage at any angle. When the back is offset to one side or another, you can pretty much determine what angle he's coming into the line at. The pistol formation makes that defense play a little bit more honest. That time a nice run inside for Oklahoma. To the 46-yard line. Play action. Knight scan on the field on a crossing route. It's got Saunders again. And he'll be run out of bounds over there on the Oklahoma sideline by Eddie Jackson. But he got seven more. You know, we haven't made the point yet that Oklahoma, in this ballgame, up front, offensive line-wise, 
three guys are playing in different positions. The only two guys playing in their normal position, the center Gabe Icard, the right guard, Nyla Casatati. Everybody else has kind of moved around. Bronson Irwin, who was the right guard, is playing right tackle. Daryl Williams, who was the right tackle, has moved over to left. They got injury to their left guard and their left tackle. So far, they're holding their own. And Eichard's the key there, and that he is the center and the captain and one of the smartest guys and one of the better players in the conference. First down throw out to McNamara, the tight end. So again, Saunders comes off the sideline, and he'll come out with Shepard and Reynolds. Three wideouts to the right side. First and ten, Oklahoma. At the Alabama 35. Clay got the corner. Brennan Clay has got another first down. Landon Collins knocked him out, but he got 12. Again, the perimeter runs. The keys kind of looked like there was going to be a quarterback run back to the left. They slipped Clay out to the other side in four angles by Alabama secondary getting to the football. You see Oklahoma when they rush it well, that's good news. And the losses, not so much. And they're in field goal territory right now for Michael Honeycutt, but they're thinking touchdown. First down at the 23. Knight, far side, overshot his intended receiver, Sterling Shepard. And that one just sailed on him a little bit. Yeah, they had it. They went with a little out and up with Shepard, and he was working on the safety, Jarek Williams, and had him beat. But you're right, the ball took off on him a little bit. He had hit his last five before that incompletion. They've done a really nice job of using pass plays and play action on early downs, on run downs, to take the pressure off the quarterback. That incompletion now brings up second and ten. A little tougher situation against this Alabama defense. Again, they'll go in the pistol here with Clay behind Knight. And now he empties the backfield. Knight fires left. Nobody there. It's going to be a quick slant to Sterling Shepard. C.J. Mosley, though, got in there and put a hit on the quarterback. See, when you go empty, then that really kind of turns the light on for C.J. Mosley. They take the back out. That means nobody's there to pick up the linebacker, and he times the blitz perfectly. Empty backfield, they don't account for him. He forces the early throw. Well, that's the first time Knight's been hit, putting the ball in the air. Tenth play of the Oklahoma drive. This is the situation they wanted to avoid for Trevor Knight. Third down and long. Throwing situation. Bunch receiver set now to the left. He's looking that way. If he gets time, now he'll run it. Trevor Knight, first down slide, just got it before he hit the deck. He might have wanted to get another half yard, but he's got the first down anyway. Good decision by Trevor Knight. He reads man match coverages. Watch all the coverage people turn their back to the quarterback and run. And as soon as he saw a lane, he took off. I'm kind of surprised that Kirby Smart had that coverage on third and ten, knowing that it was a mobile quarterback back there in Trevor Knight. They had a lot of field goals down in the red zone. They want a touchdown here to get the lead back. At the 13. Clay, straight up the middle, maybe two. Ed Stinson was the first guy there. Talked about some of the injuries this Oklahoma team has sustained. Talked about the defensive starters, the two offensive line guys that are out. Tyrus Thompson and Adam Shedd. Also, Trey Miller and a versatile H-back, fullback guy they lost was a key part of their offense. One of their other running backs, Damian Williams, was dismissed from the team. I mean, this is a team that has had some significant losses, and they have just fought and scrapped their way to a 10-win season in a BCS Bowl. Second down and eight, Knight. That's a dangerous pass, but he got it to Bester. And Bester's inside the 10, but only about a three-yard pickup. Alabama read this. I mean, usually you try to pick him off with the back. That's what Brennan Clay was trying to do. Didn't get quite enough of Eddie Jackson. 
But the good news for Oklahoma, it's a third down situation where the quarterback run is still very much a factor here. Oklahoma's three for three on their third down convergence. They've got another one here. Third down and five. They can get a first down at the three-yard line. Alabama bringing extra pressure. Knight to the corner. Incomplete. No. Touchdown. Saunders. I didn't know if he held on to it. Slot receiver looking for a matchup. He's working on Clinton Ha Ha Dix. Dix in pretty good coverage. Perfect throw by the young quarterback Trevor Knight. Throw the outs out under pressure to the outside arm. And then a nice job by Saunders reaching the ball across the pylon before he went out of bounds. And the play under review, if it's good for Saunders, it'll be his seventh receiving touchdown of the year. Here's another look. Even though Ha Ha Dix is a safety, he's one of the best in the country in good position, but a perfect throw by Trevor Knight. We take a look at the replay. Catches it, reaches the ball After across. Early on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Jalen Saunders was a wing T tight end in high school. <laughs> if you worry about his toughness, he's 5'9, 157. That's his program weight. Right. Which means he's probably even lighter than that. But there's no doubt he is a tough physical football player for that size. Michael Hanukkah in for the point after. Snaps a little wide, but they got it down, and the kick is perfect. With a minute 53 remaining in the first quarter as we take a look at tonight's Taco Bell touchdown spotlight. And it was a dandy to end the 78-yard drive in 13 plays, and Trevor Knight wings it to the corner. Saunders got it inside the pylon, 14 to 10. Bob Stoops says that's the way we do it. A minute 53 to go. Good quarter for that young man. And Alabama's defense got to be saying, wait a minute, this yep. wasn't supposed to happen. Well, and it's been the throwing of Trevor Knight as much as anything, I think, that has caught this Alabama team a little bit by surprise. He's been excellent on third down, had the one interception that was just slightly overthrown and tipped by Saunders, but he has been on the mark throwing the football so far in the first half. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, another factor early in this game is this tempo of Oklahoma, how quickly they're running plays is affecting the Alabama defense. Alabama hasn't played for 32 days. I already see a lot of the defenders, including the defensive backs, not just the big guys, their chests are heaving, their hands are on their hips. This tempo affecting the defense. Yep. No question. And then that's what Oklahoma's coaches told us. The two teams that created problems for them early in the year was Texas A&M. And the last game of the year, Auburn played with tempo and caused some problems for Alabama's defense. Christian Jones would like to return one of these kickoffs. He's got two punt return touchdowns and one on a kickoff return. And he might have a shot at this one. From three yards deep. And he goes down to the 20. Both teams doing a nice job on their kick coverage. Now, we've had some explosive offense in the first quarter. We're going to have more of that coming up in the Discover Orange Bowl. Taj Boyd and the number 12 Tigers face off against Braxton Miller and the seventh-ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State. Discover Orange Bowl, Clemson, Ohio State. It's tomorrow night. Our coverage starts at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. These guys can play right here. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be a couple defensive coordinators with a <laughs> sleepless night tonight. Of course, Brent Venables, former Oklahoma defensive coordinator, now yep. the coordinator at Clemson, will have to defend that Braxton Miller-led Ohio State offense. So Alabama from the 20. Now that they're trailing again, this time by four. And it's Derrick Henry, the freshman. Goes for about four yards. He's the biggest back Alabama has, 6'3", 238-pounder. Yeah, we were told we were going to see more of him, that he uh, has had a really good bowl preparation. 
didn't play a whole lot early in the year, but has started to come on here at the end of this season. And a big physical bat. There's the time of possession. These two teams are two of the biggest time of possession teams in the country. Only Michigan State's held the ball longer per game than these two clubs have. Second down and six. Henry again. Ooh, what a collision over there on the corner with Gabe Lynn, and he won it by about a half yard. First down. Well, I think this couple plays here are indicative of a couple things. Number one, Nick Saban and Doug Nussmeyer, offensive coordinator, want to kind of get back to establishing the physicality of their offense. Number two, give Kirby Smart's defense a chance to rest a little bit against that tempo that Holly was talking about and that, that we've mentioned. Establish the ground game, get some clock, and let your defense rest. Two tight ends in there. And Derrick Henry stays in as the tailback. First down, Alabama from the 31-yard line. Nice play fake by McCarron. He's in trouble, though, and down he goes. Gino Grissom got him. Sack number one on the night. Grissom's going to come work between the guard and the tackle. Kawanjo thought he was going to get help from his brother, and Ari Kawanjo just doesn't stay with the block, and Grissom takes an outside course to the quarterback and gets the sack. A.J. doesn't get sacked much. It's only the 11th time he's gone down this year. There was a stretch in SEC play this year where he went about a month and a half without getting touched. They just touched him to end the first quarter. And a dandy it was from New Orleans. End of one. Oklahoma 14. Alabama 10. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Back at the Superdome, we start the second quarter of the All-State Sugar Bowl. Brad Nussler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our ESPN crew. Great first quarter. Oklahoma leads it 14-10, but Alabama's got it to open up number two at the 24-yard line. But with a second down and 17 after a sack, quick slant. They got some of it back on the completion. Picked up about nine to DeAndre White. Mentioned that Oklahoma made some changes defensively this year, philosophy and scheme-wise, going to more of a 3-4 defense or a 30 front. They visited with Alabama. They employed a lot of the things they do. On first and second down, very similar. On third down, one of the things Oklahoma does that Alabama doesn't do, they like to stand up guys, move them around, try to create confusion with where their pressures are coming from. A lot more movement on third down than Alabama uses. That was Mike Stoops, a defensive coordinator you saw pacing the sideline in his second tour of duty in Norman after his head coaching Job at Arizona. A.J. McCarron going long. Wyatt has got it, and he's gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Perfectly thrown pass and a 67-yard touchdown. Cade Foster into the point after. Up and good. A.J. McCarron. He might have thrown an interception, but he's lighting it up with a long ball to DeAndre White. And he just capped off an 80-yard drive in less than three minutes with this beauty to DeAndre White, who didn't score the last time he caught it, but he got that one. 17-14, Alabama. A.J. McCarron of Alabama is a nominee for the AT&T All-American Player of the Year. 27 touchdown passes, only six interceptions, one of each tonight. 
He's already won the Maxwell Award and the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. You can visit ESPNAllAmerica.com to vote. The winner will be announced during the Vizio BCS National Championship game coming up on Monday. There's your info on how to vote. The tide back in front. 17-14. I think a lot of people thought that might be the final score tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people thought that Alabama would win big. But we have seesawed back and forth through the first 16 minutes of action. Foster to kick again. This one's way short. Gonna have to run up on him in a hurry at the 14 yard line. And Roy Finch got to the corner. Finch, the kicker, had to get him. Foster got him at the 45 yard line. A great field position and a 30 yard kickoff return as we take you back to the touchdown. Well, I mentioned Oklahoma tries to create confusion. They're gonna walk these guys up and show blitz, but they're gonna both drop out. The guy they're trying to influence is the back right here, Derrick Henry. Watch how he reads them going out and peels back out for the outside blitzer. And because he read it correctly and picked up the outside man, A.J. McCarron had enough time to throw that ball downfield to DeAndre White. With a young back, pass protection is usually the thing that holds him back. That time beautifully done by Derrick Henry. So again, a short kick and a good return by Finch and great starting field position at the 45 for the Sooners. And on the option, pitch is late. And Shepard gets drilled by Ha Ha Clinton Nix. And a loss of four. Defending the option is all about assignment football. Somebody has the back, somebody has the quarterback, somebody has the pitch man. Everyone accounted for into the short side of the field. Clinton Ha Ha Dix, one of the best safeties in America at run support, is right there for the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Makes it second down and 14. Oklahoma hasn't been behind the chains too much so far in the first half. But a long yardage situation here on second down. And Knight throws a slant, completes. Bester picked up about five, and then Landon Collins landed in on the turf, and there's a flag down on the far side. It's a false start on Oklahoma. That's their first penalty. Illegal formation, more than four players in the backfield. Number 69 was not on the last scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Remain second out. I think he meant 68. Again, that's Bronson Irwin, who has been the starting right guard, has moved out to right tackle for this game. So a little bit of a new switch for him. He's only worked at tackle in emergency situations. That time didn't line up on the line of scrimmage correctly. He's a little bit deep right now, too, as a matter of fact. Second down and 19. Play action. Screen pass coming. Clay, another big collision with... Clinton Dix and C.J. Mosley. Those two players that you just mentioned on the tackle are two of the smartest football players in college football. They really read things quickly. They've seen everything you throw at them, and they take good angles to the football. Third and long. Deep ball caught. What a catch by Derrick Woods. First down, Sooners. You know, Landon Collins... If he makes a play on the football, he might cause a collision at the point of the catch. Instead, he goes for the low tackle, and they make the completion. Now Knight comes up firing on first down. It goes right back to the other side, this time to Jazz Reynolds. How about Oklahoma on third down tonight? Wow. In their last game and against Oklahoma State, they were two for 15. They're five for five tonight. Second down and three at the tie, 30. Play action, Knight. Gonna have to try to throw this one away. And given chase was Jonathan Allen what breathing the, down his neck. What the Alabama coaches are arguing is that there were linemen there downfield. See, the, the coaches weren't arguing that it should be grounding or not. They were arguing that there were linemen downfield because that was a run play all the way. And Trevor Knight did a smart thing, throwing it away to avoid the loss of yardage play. 
Let's see if the Sooners can stay perfect on third down. Oh, that one's tipped. Adrian Hubbard got a hand on it. One of the things about this Alabama defense, they've got a lot of long guys. Adrian Hubbard is an outside linebacker, but he's six foot six. And he got underneath that throw and reached one of those long arms up. Watch number 42 on the edge of the screen, drops underneath and gets his right hand up. That's a hard thing to throw over to the short side of the field. Michael Honey cuts 23 out of 26 on the year. His longest was 44. Now this will be a 47 yard field goal attempt. Honeycutt, kick on the way. How about this ball game so far? 11:45 remaining in the first half. Oklahoma comes back and ties it up. Sooner 17, tied 17. Allstate Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Chevrolet. Find new roads. Tostitos Chips and Dips. Bring the party. Coke Zero. With real Coke taste and zero compromise, Coke Zero lets you enjoy everything. And the Discover It card. It's a game changer. Castle of Jackson Square back there in the background here in New Orleans where we're tied at 17. The guy that called all day, A.D., Adrian Peterson, Heisman Trophy finalist for Oklahoma. That guy won it for Alabama. Their only Heisman winner, Mark Ingram. Now the New Orleans Saints, they play this weekend, and he wishes they were playing in here because they play a lot better at home than they do on the road. And again, Jones is going to let that one go. And they'll bring it out to the 25. Well, one guy Alabama is happy to have back in the bowl game, Ryan Kelly, their center. He missed the Auburn game with an injury. He took the place of Barrett Jones, a hard guy to replace, but he's a physical point of attack blocker. And very happy to have him back in the center. Not only a physical blocker, but also kind of the... The other quarterback up there makes all the line calls along with A.J. McCarron and has really had a, a fine football season as a sophomore filling in for Barrett Jones. When you talk about chunk plays, Ledge. We talk about that all the time. Or explosive plays. Alabama's got 225 yards of offense. They've got plays of 53, 63, and 67 tonight. I think they got to find a way to get O.J. Howard involved. He's a matchup problem. They haven't got him the football yet. Play action. McCarron comes up firing. Got it out to Kenny Bell. Bell draws a crowd as he got across the 30 to the 32. And we check in with Holly. Well, Alabama is without their tight end right now. Brian Vogler had to go to the locker room. He was explaining to the athletic trainers that he got hit on the upper side of his left leg, kind of in that high ankle sprain injury. They put some pressure on it. He was in a lot of pain, so they've taken him to the locker room. Guys, Alabama loves to play with two tight ends. We'll see how they adjust here, but O.J. Howard definitely a target, Todd. They're like going to play. Oh, thanks, Holly. They're going to play 45 Fowler yeah. over there on that edge, just as Holly was reporting, because that's who they've got to add now as their second guy. Very versatile guy, Jalston Fowler, can play H-back, full-back, tailback. He's in motion right now in second down and three. And they're going to follow him on the run, and Yeldon's into the secondary, out to the 48-yard line. Best run of the night by T.J. Yeldon, a pickup of 16. See, they miss Vogler with his hand on the ground at the end of the line, but Fowler very comfortable in the H-back roll. Watch, leads the play. The tackle kicks out. Fowler leads up in there and Yeldon gets right in his hip pocket for a nice gain in the first down. First down at the 48-yard line for Alabama. Fowler comes out, gets a breather. They come in with a three-wide receiver set here as A.J. McCarron in the shotgun. And he'll throw on first down. Pump fakes and going long down the sideline. Tipped at the last moment. Amari Cooper had a beat on it, but Zach Sanchez made a great play. Aaron Colvin, the opposite corner, was blitzing. The ball was slightly underthrown. Amari Cooper's got a step. 
the ball was a little underthrown, and that enabled Sanchez to dive and get a hand on the football. Well-timed jump by Zach Sanchez. You know, he's a redshirt freshman, kind of was a surprise starter. And when you have a guy the caliber of Aaron Colvin on the other side, that guy's going to get tested a lot. A lot of balls thrown at Sanchez. Mike Stoops saying, hey, Cooper was pushing off. Should have been offensive pass interference. Instead, second down and 10. E.J. Yeldon drives his way and backpedals his way for almost five. Alabama back in Sooner territory. We mentioned some of the changes to the Oklahoma offensive line. One change for Alabama, a new starting right guard. Anthony Steen, a three-year starter, injured, out. And so Leon Brown, number 72, who was a backup tackle, is starting a guard tonight. Got a nice block on that particular play. DeAndre White has been the big play guy tonight. Number two, he's in a slot to the top of your screen. For A.J. McCarron on a third down and five. Ball goes that way. Cooper's got it. Amari Cooper. They'll drive him out of bounds, but he's got a first down at the 31-yard line, and you hear the chance of Coop from the Alabama faithful. Beautiful route. Watch Cooper keep his body in between the ball and his man Sanchez, and another missed tackle after the catch. We've seen Oklahoma have some problems getting these Alabama receivers down after the catch. A physical catch and run by Amari Cooper. So Alabama driving here with nine minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter in a tie game at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Again, a pistol formation here for A.J. McCarron at the Sooner 31-yard line. Yeldon cuts back in the middle, and again, a tough run. It looked like he was going to get much, and he got six out of it. You know, for all the spread pass offenses that Oklahoma sees in the Big 12 week in and week out, Mike Stoops told us he thought this collection of wide receivers Alabama has is the best that they faced all season. A after, lot of talent. After the interception, pretty good, huh? Five out of seven, 162 yards, and a touchdown. Seventh play of the tie drive, second down and four at the Sooner 25. Fowler Again, back Fowler's in. back yep. in there. Last time they ran the counter with him leading the way. He moves that way. And he'll follow him again. Weaving his way for what looks like possibly another first down. It's going to depend on how they spot it. The linesman looks like it's going to come up a little bit short. Well, some teams that ran the football on Oklahoma this year that caused some problems for them. Big physical teams. Notre Dame. Ran the ball well early in the year. Texas, in the upset win in Dallas, ran it 60 or 55 times for 260 yards. And Leon Brown's going to have to come out because his shoe came off. And so an already shuffled offensive line has got to shuffle another guy out there. Kellen Williams will take his play on a vital third down here. And Alabama's maybe going to take a timeout to figure yeah. this thing out. They don't want to blow an opportunity here. So we'll take a timeout as well. 7.30 remaining in the half. Tie game in New Orleans. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl here in New Orleans. I'll tell you what, partner, why don't we just get every game in 2014. <laughs> That'll work to work like this one 17-17 yeah. this is a lot of fun right this now. is a lot of fun and you know the thing I've been most impressed with is both quarterbacks threw interceptions and they both have responded and come back and led their teams and made big time throws ever since that point and of course AJ McCarron now has his team on the move again in scoring territory in Oklahoma part of the field we've had two lead changes two ties currently tied at 17 and with the regular lineman back out there after calling the timeout third down and one first time we've seen an eye backfield I think all night and it yelled in straight ahead boy they stood him up but he got the first down not by much yeah he didn't need very much and he didn't get very much but he got enough and the good news for Alabama too is Vogler back on the field as well so the tight end who had the ankle injury that left the field is back out there at least for that play he was yep Comes back out now, but they've got the first down. 
And this is where Alabama typically likes play action. Again, O.J. Howard has been very quiet in the ball game so far. A big weapon for them. Three wide receivers set here, though, on first down at the 20. McCarron slips screen to Amari Cooper, and Cooper dives forward for about seven. Tapper holding on for dear life. Amari Cooper coming off an Auburn game when he had a career high 178 yards on six catches. And again, when he's healthy, he's as good as there is in college football. He's physical, he's fast, he's really good with the ball after the catch, and he's showing that again tonight. Already 91 yards on four receptions. Second down and three. The Andrew White in motion. Yeldon puts both hands around the football and got a yard and a half. Eric Stryker made the tackle, and they'll bring up another third and short. Eric Stryker's a fun guy to watch. He's undersized as a linebacker. He's 215, 218 pounds, very fast and explosive. Excellent pass rusher off the edge. That time, he made a tackle on a big bag inside between the tackles. His name matches the way he plays, yeah. that's for sure. Alabama's already converted two third downs on this drive. A third and five and a third and one is another third and one. And again, it's yelled in behind Fowler, and he's got another first down. And the ball out at the end. I don't know. Oklahoma's going the other way. Geno Grissom's got the football. You know, I think his own man knocked the ball out. Harry Quanjo, number 77, I think is going to hit Yeldon after he has the first down and knocked the ball out. Right there, his own man, number 77, knocked it out. They're reviewing the play, but it certainly looked like he was not down. The ball was out, and all of a sudden, number 85 is going the other way. There you see the ball is out. And Gino Grissom says, thank you. I'm heading out of here with it. Boy, heads up play by O.J. Howard. That could have been a touchdown return because there were a lot of Alabama players away from the football that had stopped. And O.J. Howard chased it down for the tackle. That is That's Oklahoma's first red zone fire. takeaway this first year. Down. It's a huge one. coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear more driven. DJ Yeldon has lost three fumbles this year including the one a moment ago that's given the ball back to the Sooner offense now. And as I mentioned first time they've had a takeaway in the red zone this year for Oklahoma it's a big one. Keith Ford, the freshman, got a couple. Jeff Pagan made the tackle. So two turnovers by Alabama, which is kind of unlike the tide. An interception by McCarron and that fumble by Yeldon. Trevor Knight, play action, rolls and throws and completes it. And a nice move by Bester to get the first down. Well, Bester's built a little differently than these other receivers. Saunders and Shepard are smaller, shiftier guys. Bester's a 6'3 guy, but shows quick feet, making one guy miss out there on the perimeter. From the 46, first down throw, complete out to Shepard. And he's into Alabama territory. So we check in with Holly. Well, Shepard actually just got back out onto the playing field. They take him into the locker room to examine his left shoulder. He had some kind of a stinger or injury. He's back out there. They get it right to him as soon as he got back out. On a second and five, straight up the gut. Only a yard or two, though, for Keith Ford. As Rick Williams made the stop in the secondary. I think Oklahoma now will get a little bit more aggressive offensively. When they got that ball to start this possession, if you get a first down, 
Then you go ahead and get a little more aggressive here before the end of the half. Four minutes and 20 seconds and counting. Trevor Knight has been pretty smart with the football, and he's been very good on third down. Seven different receivers as well. Third down and four. They empty the backfield. He's going to have to get rid of it in a hurry and did complete. Clay, I don't think, is going to get there. He's close, though. Now, again, Oklahoma taking a little bit of a page out of the Auburn playbook and attacking the perimeter in the edges of this Alabama defense. You challenge their tackling. You challenge their angles to the football. That time, Alabama responded the right way and brought them up short of the first down. And lo and behold, we're going to see a punter. In this case, Jed Barnett. It looks like Alabama and a punt safe defense, you know, in the Oklahoma State win at the end of the season. One of the key plays in that game, a fake field goal that Bob Stoops called. And it was a touchdown. Yep. Honeycutt with the eight yard reception for a touchdown. Timeout. Oklahoma. So Oklahoma takes a timeout with a fourth down and one. Gives us a chance to remind you, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN as James Franklin and the Commodores. Make their third consecutive bowl appearance. They'll take on the Cougars in the BBVA Compass Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week. Vandy and Houston get together Saturday, 1 o'clock on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Well, if you've been watching this one, hopefully you're enjoying it as much as we have. 17-17 between Nick Saban's Crimson Tide and Bob Stoops. Sooners of Oklahoma. And a fourth down upcoming, fourth and one for OU at the tied 45 yard line. The last time these teams played in the regular season was 2003. Here comes the offense back yep. on the field. So Bob Stoops deciding to gamble a little bit here. This ought to raise the roof of the Superdome depending on how this play goes either way. I think they're just going to try to draw him. <laughs> here they come and he's got it. Clay got two yards. That is a gutsy call by Bob Stoops. His team's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. At first, he was going to punt. Then he decides to go for it. Nice job picking up the inside blitz by Irwin. And again, on first down, Trevor Knight has been very effective. Eight of nine passing for 91 yards, all on first down. Adrian Peterson likes it. And now... The officials are going to stop playing. I think we're going to have an Oklahoma timeout again. Oklahoma, their second. It will be 30 seconds. It's a short timeout here. They've done well on fourth down. They were three for three in the Bedlam game against Oklahoma State, and they are now 11 out of 16 on the season on fourth down conversions. Well, the thing about Oklahoma's offense tonight, we talked about the makeshift offensive line. They've given Trevor Knight good protection. And when the protection's there and it's zone coverage, he stays in the pocket and he delivers the football down the field. When he reads man coverage and guys with their back to the quarterback and he sees a lane, he's made a couple decisions to scramble. He's been very comfortable in and out of the pocket tonight so far for the Oklahoma offense. And, you know, that fourth down, Alabama's had teams, that was the 19th fourth down play teams have gone against him. And when it's three yards or fewer, 50% they've given it up. When it's four yards or more, they've shut them out 10 times. That was fourth and one. Oklahoma got it. So Sooners down to one timeout. But a first down at the 43. Play action. Knight's going to go long down the sideline. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown. Forty three yards to Jalen Saunders again. Wow. Another first down throw. Josh Heupel really calling a nice game for Trevor Knight. That was a stop and go route by Saunders on Deion Blue and it froze him. Extra point is good. T.J. Yeldon put it on the deck on one end and 66 yards of turf later on the seventh play 
of the drive, including a fourth down conversion. How about this throw? Stop and go against single coverage. Deion Blue went for the fake. Jalen Saunders got separation and a perfect throw by Trevor Knight over the outside shoulder. Watch the move. That is pretty. So is that. <laughs> so another lead change. And now we have a touchdown difference between the number 11 Sooners and the third ranked Crimson Tide. 24 17 Oklahoma. Since that interception, look at the numbers Trevor Knight's put up. You know, and that interception was not a bad decision, no. and it wasn't a bad throw, just a little high, and it got tipped in the air and was picked off. He has been on the mark in the entire first half throwing the football. And for Alabama, a continuing struggle in the red zone. You mentioned the first turnover, but they've been struggling in the red zone, three possessions, a touchdown, and a field goal when they had first and goal at the 10, and then the turnover. And they had problems against Auburn in the last game in the fourth quarter in the red zone as well. I don't think a lot of people thought that Alabama would give Oklahoma 24 points, much less in the first half. Christian Jones met at the 16-yard line, and down he goes. Everett on the kick coverage as we get on to Holly. Well, Trevor Knight looking pretty comfortable on that last touchdown throw, and for good reason. He is playing in the home of Drew Brees. He wears number nine because he grew up idolizing the New Orleans Saints quarterback, who is also from Texas, where Trevor Knight's from. He actually got to meet him last Friday. Oklahoma was practicing at the Saints facility, and look who he met. I think he did a pretty good impersonation of Drew Brees right there. He looks right at home in this Superdome field. <laughs> He said to Jay Norvell, a co-offensive coordinator, was he a little freaked out when he met Drew? He said he's, he was really cool until they actually got the picture, and then Drew walked away, and he said, Coach, dude, that was Drew Brees. <laughs> <laughs> so now A.J. McCarron playing behind by a touchdown. And it's Henry. And the big fella gets out for what looks like another first down. Alabama with two timeouts, lots of time here in the first half, and you've got a senior quarterback who is the winningest quarterback in school history. So you've got some faith in him and trust in him. Once you get that first first down in this drive, then you put it in your quarterback's hands in the two-minute offense. Yeah, there's not going to be any panic in number 10, not at this point. Late blitz coming. McCarron comes to the near side, complete to Kenny Bell. And Bell's got it out around the 34 yard line. Aaron Colvin, who had shoulder problems in the middle of the season, then a toe issue. And they say probably around 90%, but he at 90% is uh, a pretty good one. Another Tulsa native senior captain. Second down and four. With just under two minutes to play in the half. McCarron pressure coming from the backside. AJ got around that, directs traffic, and now he's going to head for the first down marker, and he got there. And that was Stryker. Again, their best edge pass rusher. He thought he had AJ McCarron for sure. Cyrus Kwanjo does a nice job just taking him outside enough to enable McCarron to step up inside and scramble for the first down. And Mike Stoops almost got run over over there, and now he's yelling at his players for letting A.J. McCarron get that first down. <laughs> all the Stoops boys are here. I saw all of them yesterday. Mark and Ron, and of course Mike and Bob on the sideline here tonight. First down, Alabama. McCarron, quick throw to the outside. Amari Cooper makes the catch. Coming up on the Buick Halftime Report with Reese and the guys. First half shootout, I guess. And then a preview of the Orange Bowl. With the Tigers of Clemson and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. All that's coming up on the Buick Halftime Report. See, the dilemma right now for Mike Stoops is if I bring pressure and try to go after A.J. McCarron, he is very effective when you blitz him because he's seen every imaginable blitz you can bring at him 
and he knows when you bring pressure, that leaves one-on-one -on -one coverage with his dangerous receivers. Second down and five. He's got three of them out there if he has time to throw it. And he's going to have to throw this one away. Eric Stryker was given chase again. <laughs> AJ gives him a little pat on the helmet as if say, nice job, man. Now it's third down and five. With a minute 39, Alabama two timeouts remaining. Again, the guy who has been quiet, AJ has spread the football around a little bit. OJ Howard still without a catch. Very quiet in this first half. And I think a matchup problem for this Oklahoma defense. He's lined up on the right side. And now Alabama's going to have to take another timeout. No, it's going to be Oklahoma taking the timeout. Timeout. So Oklahoma. that is their last <laughs> timeout of the half. There's a bunch of guys upset with Julian White, number two. I'm not sure exactly, or Julian Wilson. Not exactly sure what he did wrong. He wasn't lined up correctly, and uh, he was getting an earful, still getting an earful, from his teammates over there. And Colvin's right in his grill. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? We're teammates. <laughs> He's getting some coaching from everybody, that's for sure. Including the middle linebacker, Shannon, and Aaron Colvin, as I mentioned, the captain of the defense, or one of the captains of the defense. Well, this is an inspired Oklahoma team. Again, you, you look at the injuries that they've suffered and, and the fact that they have fought and clawed and scratched their way to 10 wins and earned their right to a BCS Bowl and now playing Alabama, a heavy favorite in this ball game, playing them completely off their feet here in the first half. There's a couple of captains that they lost, we mentioned. And they're starting signal caller on defense and they're starting nose tackle. Third down and five, A.J. McCarron in trouble. Got away, at least for now. McCarron throws on the run, and it is caught by Kevin Norwood. Wow. Great job by A.J. extending the play. You know, he's extended the play and thrown it away, but on this third down, he says, I got to make a play. He gets away from the rush. Norwood knows where he is on the sideline. Good footwork on the sidelines and a beautiful throw by A.J. Kevin Norwood gets overlooked sometimes. He was voted a team captain yep. by his teammates. Pretty honored, and that's his first catch of the night, and it is a huge one. At the 48-yard line, first down tied with 129 and two timeouts. McCarron again has to be on the move and throws it away on the sideline. Right now, Oklahoma getting decent pressure, only rushing three or four. And that enables them to drop coverage, and that's why we've seen A.J. have to throw the ball away a couple times on this possession. Whenever you can create pressure with three or four and drop seven or eight into coverage, you have an advantage as a defense. I mentioned there was a time where he went about five games without getting his uniform dirty. He's only been sacked once tonight, but he's done a nice job eluding the rush on this drive to keep it alive. Off coverage up at the top. Second down and 10. Here comes the blitz. McCarron lets it go, and he's picked off. Sanchez all the way to the 15-yard line. The second interception of the half suffered by A.J. McCarron. A well-timed blitz. Mike Stoops decided to go after him, brought the pressure off the slot, an unblocked man, and A.J. McCarron thought he had single, threw it out there, and Sanchez read the play. He knows he has to get rid of it on the blitz. Amari Cooper didn't come back to the football, and Sanchez beat him to the mark, and a huge interception right before the half. At the 13-yard line, a golden opportunity for the Sooners to grab command of the game here before halftime. End around. Shepard. Shepard. Touchdown. Oklahoma.
Man, oh man, have they taken opportunity by turnover to turn them into points. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the celebration, I guess, after the play was over. What a great play call. After the turnover, momentum on your side. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number three of the offense for a throat slash. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. I did not see that when it happened. So a throat slash gesture by Shepard after the end of round score. Wow. Mike Honecutt in for the point after. Again, the snap's a little wide, but the hold is perfect. And it's an almost perfect half for Oklahoma. Beautiful play call, but watch Bronson Irwin. Again, this is his first game playing tackle. Watch him get two blocks. Ripkowski gets a block to set up the end around. Watch 68, Bronson Irwin get one block, slip out, get another block. Ripkowski gets a pancake block. And Shepard takes it in for the touchdown. Beautiful play call by Josh Heupel and well executed by the Oklahoma offense. And the only bad part of that play was when it was over. And yeah, that wasn't I don't think no, that that's was not a throat, throat slash. slash. That that's was just a, a Superman sooner. deal. That's a Superman Sooners. That's a, yeah. that's a Cam Newton thing. You know, they might have missed that, but at any rate, Oklahoma, get a load of this ledge, has scored on their last five possessions. When's the last time that happened to an Alabama defense, you figure? <laughs> Long time ago? Yeah. Or ever? Well, now, think of this. Coming into the game, second in the nation in scoring defense. 11.3 yeah. points per game. Only Florida State, the number one team in the country, better at 10.7. So Oklahoma has just destroyed them tonight in the first half. Alabama's defense the last two games getting gouged a little bit. In this case, passing yardage over 200. And we're not at halftime yet, right. folks. <laughs> 31 to 17. Oh, man, had you told me that Oklahoma was going to score 31 in the first half against Alabama, I'd have thought you were on Bourbon Street way too long. Well, they've capitalized on the turnovers. Yeldon fumbled in the red zone. Oklahoma turned it into points. A.J. McCarron threw one that ended up in the red zone on the return, and they turned that one into a touchdown as well. All year long, Oklahoma has scored 44 points off opponents' turnovers. All season long. They got 21 tonight. Yep. Because of the penalty, this kick should be easily returnable by Christian Jones, and it will be from the 10 yard line. Jones, and he broke free. Christian Jones, nice return after the 45, so a costly penalty on the unsportsmanlike conduct call has given Alabama a chance here. They still got 56 seconds to work with, and two timeouts. Tying a career high with two interceptions. A.J. McCarron, we'll see if he can settle in now. Even if they could get a field goal before halftime, I think they'd feel a little better about the chances. They've got a lot of football left. You know, Mike Stoops just waited to the perfect time to call a pressure. He played coverage, he played coverage, he played coverage, and he went with pressure and forced the turnover, the last possession. They're going to bring pressure again. And McCarron has to throw it into his own bench. See, this is not necessarily, even as good as Alabama's wide receivers are, this is not their comfort zone or their wheelhouse, just having to throw the football in three and four wide receiver sets. Their primary pass game is based on their ability to run the football and go play action. And uh, Oklahoma has them a little bit out of their comfort zone. Of course, right here at the end of the half, you'd be in this anyway, but they've been in it a lot here in the first half. A.J. McCarron has only hit one of his last five passes. 
Gets it to Yeldon out of the backfield on this one. Complete for only a four-yard gain. And Alabama might take another one of their timeouts right here. Alabama, their second. That'll stop the clock at the 43-second mark remaining in the half. Here's the turnover suffered by the Tide. First throwing into coverage. McCarron, that was his first interception. And then T.J. Yell put this one on the deck after running into his own guy. And that turned into points for the Sooners. And then as Todd said, the pressure came at the right time, and Sanchez almost took this one the distance, and that turned into a touchdown. Tonight, 21 points surrendered off those turnovers by Alabama. Aaron Colvin is down on the far side over there around the 43 yard line. Again, he'd been battling a toe problem. Yeah. And it looks like that might be recurring right here. Very talented corner. One of the best in college football. And he's had a kind of a hard year because of the injuries. Had a shoulder injury early, had the toe injury most recently. Be interesting to see if he's able to go in the second half. Dakota Austin, a true freshman, comes in to take his spot. A.J. McCarron might be thinking about going that way. Right now, he's worried about getting the first down on third down and six. McCarron in trouble. Got it to Yeldon out of the backfield. P.J. Yeldon still on his feet inside the 35. First down, Alabama, and a 19-yard pickup. Nice job by A.J. McCarron. Hanging in the pocket until the last possible minute. And then finding his outlet receiver, Yeldon, for the first down. Clock starts again after they move the chains. McCarron on first down. Throws complete, but it's in the field of play here to Kevin Norwood. Use that last time out right here. Oklahoma had an extra guy on the field. I think that's what the penalty is going to be. Nick Saban conferring with the officials. And the referee, Brad Allen, wants to know his options. Right. And we'll tell you, or Brad will, right now. Illegal substitution, 12 players on the defense. That penalty is accepted at five yards from the previous spot. It remains first down. The game clock will start on my signal. So they got to save their timeout, but they got to be ready to snap it as soon as they mark it ready for play because the clock is moving now. McCarron, look out. Down he goes. And it's Stryker. Now there's a penalty for taking his helmet off. Should be. I don't know that anybody saw him do it, but that's a penalty. Timeout. Alabama. Their third and final. And and that's the second sack of the three. night. He's so quick off the edge. And Cyrus Kwanjo is the best offensive lineman for Alabama, but he's just not quick enough to take care of Stryker off the edge. Great first step, dips his shoulder underneath, and then gets to A.J. McCarron. And at the end here, he took his helmet off. That, that's a penalty. Very fortunate none of the officials saw him. Now he's that fast. Yeah. <laughs> With everything he does. And that, that backs it up to the 36-yard line. I'm not going to say they were in any way, shape, or form in field goal range before, but that sack doesn't help. Yeah. Well, and uh, attempting a long field goal with not much time left. That's not a good thing that, for Alabama. That doesn't bring back very good <laughs> memories for Alabama. Foster's long this year is 53 yards. So second down and 14, only 11 seconds remaining, and no timeouts left. Three wideouts to McCarron's left. He's looking that way. Throws back across the middle, got to get out of bounds, and Norwood did. With four seconds left, a 21-yard pickup. <laughs> and here comes the field goal unit. Juanjo got the best of striker that time. Ended up on top of him on the ground at the end of the play, and uh, 
A.J. McCarron did a nice job again extending the play and finding his reliable receiver Norwood for the big completion. I said earlier even a field goal would help the feeling of Alabama right. heading to the locker room. So here it is if they can make it 32 yard attempt by Cade Foster. A.J. McCarron to hold. Kick by Foster up and it's no good. Wide right by just a little. Yep, it's that kind of feeling when you're looking for at least three points if you're an Alabama fan. Let's check in with Holly and Bob Stoops. Coach, what does it do for this team's confidence to hold them without a field goal there and all the turnovers you've created? Well, um, you know, our guys, we came in confident. We're, we played some good football through the year. Uh, guys are executing in a good way and, and forcing his hand a little bit. You are getting great pressure on A.J. McCarron, sometimes without blitzing. What's it enabling you to well, do that? 19, Eric Stryker's a great blitzer for us. 85, Geno Grissom, both have had great pressure tonight. They're good pass rushers, and, and they're having a tr trouble blocking them. Thanks, Coach. All right. I don't think a lot of folks thought that Oklahoma would score 31 points in the game, much less in two quarters. Missed it by that much. Still 31-17 Sooners at halftime. Reese and the guys in the Buick Halftime Report coming up right after these messages. is a place of survival and spirit, of pride and strength. Tonight, it's the place where they come to prove a point. One, two, three, six. Knight might want all of it right here. And it's complete down the sideline. Bester, touchdown. Alabama bringing extra pressure. Knight to the corner. Incomplete, no, touchdown. Saunders. A.J. McCarron going long. Wyatt has got it, and he's gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Knight's gonna go long down the sideline. Oh, what a catch! Touchdown! And around. Checker, touchdown, Oklahoma. And we welcome you back to New Orleans and the All-State Sugar Bowl. And what a first half we had. The Sooners trying to pull the shocker, and they lead it 31 to 17 over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Welcome back inside the dome, everybody. Brad Nestle with Todd Blackledge. Alabama's on pace for about 700 yeah. yards of offense, and they're behind by two touchdowns. Unbelievable. They <laughs> averaged over nine yards per play, but turnovers always one of the biggest right. stories in any ball game. Three turnovers that led to three touchdowns for Oklahoma, and then going back. To the Auburn game some of the same problems number one the red zone, red zone. only five scores in ten of their last ten attempts in the red zone and field goals they've only made one field goal out of their last six attempts and uh, that field goal right before the half you mentioned it just for momentum's sake as Oklahoma starts with the football Alabama needs to get a stop here from their defense and then get back into running the football and doing what they do well Alabama in those four red zone possessions got a touchdown and a field goal and then a turnover and a missed field goal at the end of the second quarter. And that allowed Oklahoma 17 unanswered second quarter points. Hopefully the second half is filled with as much excitement as the first. And let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Nick Saban told me that their coverage was trying to play to account for the option or the zone read with the quarterback and that mobile quarterback. And he said, as a result, they're nickel and diming us to death in the flat. So look for them to change their coverage, how they're lining up to stop some of that short passing game that Oklahoma's had so much success with. And then he said, how about three turnovers? We cannot turn it over three times and expect to have any kind of success. We've got to limit the turnovers in the second half, and people just need to do their jobs and execute what they're supposed to do. Well, a defensive-minded coach like Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, his defensive coordinator, let's see what they've come up with. First down to open the third quarter for the Sooners at the 25. And whoa, that's the way you start the half. <laughs> you know what? I was just about to say they have to figure out a way to make Trevor Knight uncomfortable because he was comfortable the whole first half. First play, this is uncomfortable when a defensive tackle lands on you like that. 
They did a lot of throwing on first down. Knight was 9 for 11, 134 yards, and a couple of touchdowns on first down. That time they tried to run, and Alabama got the negative play. Negative play to make it second down and 15. Four wide receiver group for Knight this time. Quick throw on the slant and dropped. Jazz Reynolds should have had it. He knows it. And it's third and 15. We said earlier, I said, I wonder when the last time there was five possessions, all scores against the Alabama defense. Our guys downstairs dug it up. Ten years ago against Tennessee, but all of them were in overtime. <laughs> Good job, gang. Incredible. But this is the way Alabama wanted to start the third quarter defensively if they can get a stop here on third down at 15. Knight got away from the first wave, throws on the run, incomplete, and they will force a punt. But there's a flag down, and it's going to go against Oklahoma, so that'll be the climb. And this is the first time we're going to have a punt from Oklahoma. And their first three and out, in fact. A lot of enthusiasm on that Alabama sideline after that three and out, too. Should be good field position. Once Barnett kicks this as Christian Jones waits back on the other end at the 40-yard line. Barnett, nice kick. Jones from the 30. And already he's got some green grass in front. There's a flag down as Jones on his way down the sideline. Christian Jones hesitates and scores. Coming but back, is it though. coming back? Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> Oklahoma coaches are over there calling him back. Yard return for a touchdown. What could have been, but there's one. And there's the other. And it negates Christian Jones' punt return. But Alabama will have the ball when we come back. Nice for our Discover game changer tonight. The Oklahoma defense all year long had scored only 44 points off turnovers. But they got interceptions from Gabe Lynn. They got a fumble recovery by Gino Grissom that led to a field goal. And then they got Zach Sanchez stepping in front of that pass intended for Cooper. And those all turned into 21 points in this ball game so far. Well, and again, as we just start the third quarter after Alabama gets that three and out, I think they've got to kind of go back to utilizing their run game and setting up their play action pass. They don't have to get it all back in a hurry. They got a lot of football left here in the second half. DJ Yeldon had one of those turnovers, a fumble, and he's going to get the call right here. And Yeldon trying to make up for it, gets eight yards before Stryker can bring him down. So it's out to the 37 yard line. DJ Yeldon, another. Thousand yard plus season two years in a row. Picked up eight there. Second down and two. And we got moose, uh, motion on the left side. That's Cyrus Quanjo. You know, Eric, Eric Stryker has kind of gotten into the head of Cyrus Quanjo in the first half. I mean, they, uh, they had a couple times when they went after each other at the end of the half before they left the field. They had a little bit of jawing back and forth at each other. And 
right there, uh, you can see just a little anxious blocking striker <laughs> off the edge. He's going to go over the other side this time. Austin Shepard can worry about him or the tight end. That's Amari Cooper in motion. Second down and seven. E.J. Yeldon, a little hesitation, lost his own footing. And Frank Shannon was there to make sure he didn't go any further. He's going to bring up third down and a couple, maybe three. This is where Alabama really needs to keep this drive alive. Yeah. Well, you know, and for A.J. McCarron, I mean, the situation that Alabama finds themselves in is very unusual. They have not had to play from behind very much at all this season, or really in any of the three seasons that A.J.'s been the starting quarterback. They're five out of seven on the third down conversions, third and three here. McCarron, straight drop. And batted down at the line. And Grissom, I think, got a hand on it. So was... the second time he's made a big play tonight. Going for O.J. Howard, trying to get his tight end involved on the crossing route, and he was open. He had Howard crossing the field. Would have been a first down. And Grissom got his hand on the football. Timed his jump very well and denied the third down completion. And so it's going to be Alabama's first punt of the night for Cody Mandel. Sam Mosley, his protector there, number 32, making sure everybody's lined up right. Mandel's kick a mile in the Superdome sky. Lights and lands down at the 23-yard line with a fair catch. So Oklahoma getting set to go back to work on offense. And they all stay sugar bowl when we come back. All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by Ford. Go further. Gatorade. When you put in the hard work, you can win from within. Universal Pictures' new film, Lone Survivor, starring Mark Wahlberg, in theaters January 10th, and Vizio Fandemonium. Go to VizioFanzone.com and outshout your rival to push your team to victory. French Quarter might be a lot busier about two hours from now, I would imagine. All-State Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma leading by two touchdowns. And they've got the ball back. Sooners at their own 24. Again, that first half, Trevor Knight, 9 of 11, throwing the football. 134 yards and two touchdowns. They haven't run for much. Clay will try here, and he does a nice job out to the 30-yard line. Hagan made the tackle. Brennan Clay, when he goes over 100 yards rushing, they're 3-0 and on the year. But he hasn't had much tonight. 31 yards on seven carries. But he's approaching 1,000, which 20 other Oklahoma players have done over the years, including, of course, Adrian Peterson, who you saw a little bit earlier on the sideline. Second and four. They fake the fly sweep, and Knight goes straight up the middle and gets pasted by C.J. Mosley. And Denzel the ball. Mosley is a very active guy. You know, he and DePriest are kind of the leaders in that defense. They make the calls. They read things quickly. Bring up a third down and short. C.J. was a butkus. Finalist a year ago this year, he won it. Five out of eight on third down conversions tonight so far for the Sooners. Third down and two. Going to empty the backfield again. Knight's in trouble. Throws on the run and flag down, incomplete. I think there might have been an illegal motion on Oklahoma. Wait and see for the call. And it is against OU. Back-to-back well, -back three and outs for the Alabama defense coming out of the locker room. Illegal formation foul. More than four players in the backfield. Number 68 was not on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is this high. 
fourth down. It's the second time yeah. they've done that. Irwin, the right tackle. Well, and for Alabama, they've started to make Trevor Knight a little more uncomfortable. They, they forced him to get out of the pocket when he didn't want to. They've hit him a couple times, and that's what they did not do in the first half. Remember, Christian Jones took 170 yards last time he touched it, but they were illegal blocks. He's going to take it from the same spot. And reverses his field. Looking for blockers. And goes down at the 40-yard line. So he did get 10 yards on the return with just over 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Emotional game in this 80th All-State Sugar Bowl. Sooner still leading by two touchdowns. Back five years ago in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama met six ranked Utah. And after falling to Florida in the SEC championship and missing out on a chance at the BCS title game, Utah jumped all over them 21 to nothing. Javier Arenas pulled the tie to within 11 with a 73 yard punch re uh, punt return, but Utah won, finished their season 13 and 0, 31 to 17. A lot of people have brought that game up yeah. this week, thinking, will Alabama be ready? <laughs> well, you know, a couple of similarities, a couple of John Parker Wilson interceptions, a fumble. They sacked him eight times. A little uncharacteristic for Alabama that night. And the turnover is a little uncharacteristic in the first half of this game. Henry's a tailback. They fake it to him, and McCarron throws out in the flat to Cooper. And Amari Cooper run out at the 47-yard line by Aaron Colvin. First half, 13 possessions, and we had eight scores. Second half, three three and outs. A little different story so far here in the first five minutes of quarter number three. Well, I think it's important if Alabama can get a, a drive going and score here, the other thing that will happen is this Alabama crowd, their portion of the crowd here in the Superdome will become a little bit more electric. Again, it's Henry, and he's got a first down, and he almost popped out the backside of that play. Got it into OU territory at the 48. See, the, the best thing that Alabama does is run the football and throw play action off of the run. They like deep crossing routes off of play action, but that comes after you've established that run game. And uh, it looks like they're trying to get back to that a little bit and going with the bigger back and Derrick Henry again they they outweigh their bigger than this front of Oklahoma Fowler the fullback lines up on the right side Vogler the other tight end in there as well here comes the play action McCarron going long and overshot everybody Amari Cooper was the intended receiver well number one and number two getting together in the Vizio BCS National Championship game Seminoles and their Heisman Trophy winner Jameis Winston taking on the Auburn Tigers after their remarkable ride looking to raise the crystal ball and there's the quarterback comparison reminder you can also watch the Vizio BCS National Championship on eight different ways across the ESPN networks we call it BCS megacast you'll see a lot of those two guys both exciting dangerous quarterbacks Juanjo might have come out of his stance. At least that's what the Sooners are saying. And that's Ari Quanjo, not Cyrus. It's a lot of Quanjo. 625 pounds of it. Offside. On to the defense. Ooh. So that was a reaction by the Quanjos to the jump by the Sooners. <laughs> Charles Tapper is looking up there and pointing at the Jumbotron as if to say, hey, you look for yourself. Yeah. Not a reviewable call, though, Charles. <laughs> so second down and five. Henry stays in there. They're weak on the right side of the formation. If Alabama runs there, here goes Stryker moving over late. Henry, this time he does pop out the backside. Derrick Henry, foot race, touchdown.
We saw him go 80 yards in a hurry on that big frame earlier this year. He just scored for 43 yards out. See, they were a little deficient on this side of the ball. Henry's going to start in here and bounce it back out. Oklahoma didn't have enough manpower on that side of the field. And when Henry popped back out, he had nothing but green grass in front of him. And that guy can move for his size. Cade Foster in for the point after. Up and good. 8.49 remaining in the third quarter. Just what the Alabama doctor ordered. A big play. And they get it from their freshman. 60-yard drive in just four snaps. And it's 31-24. Thirty-one twenty-four. The more I see of this freshman from Uly, Florida, the more I like him, Todd. Absolutely, did a nice job of finding a little crease on the cutback. Oklahoma is going to slant their defense this way. Alabama does a great job staying under blocks and watch the center, Ryan Lindsey, coming off the double team, getting to the second level and picking up the linebacker. Watch him slip off, get the linebacker. Henry slid right between that crack and then showed his speed, getting it to the backside of the play. Nice job by Alabama staying on those blocks. The center moving up to the second level and Derrick Henry reading the blocks perfectly for the Alabama touchdown. And just before this kickoff, the Alabama sideline getting into it. Everybody, as you said, trying to get the Tide fans back in it. They're back in it. It started with their defense. That first three and out making Trevor Knight a little uncomfortable, and they've kept it up. This kick to the goal line to Roy Finch. And Finch trying to bust it outside. Lost his balance a little bit, but still got a nice return at around the 24-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, I've been on the Alabama sidelines for their last two national champions, and understandably tonight, it's just very different. It's just a little bit quiet, a little bit flat. Even the fans have been quiet over there, but two times tonight, really, they've gotten some juice. Once on that first three and out that they forced after halftime, they started to get some life, and then after that Derrick Henry run, they're finally getting into it. The fans are finally standing up over on that Alabama sideline. Let's see if they can sustain that energy. Oklahoma in the second half, six plays, only three yards. And two three and outs. As Holly mentioned, that one was big. They scored after it. Now it's time for the Sooners to put it back together offensively. Play action. Knight on the run. And throws a little bit high. Saunders couldn't handle it. And incomplete, it'll be second down. Well, Holly mentioned what Nick Saban said in that first half. Too much off coverage. Look now. Up on top of the receivers on first down. They're not going to give them the easy throws on first down. They're going to make Trevor Knight throw against coverage and prove that he can be accurate against tight coverage. He's missed his last five after that incompletion. And a flag, though. Going to have Williams back there defensively with the penalty. See, when you put Saunders in the slot, you have a better chance of matching him up against a safety instead of a corner. Pass interference, defense, number 20. So there's the first first down of the third quarter, and it comes by penalty. It's the same concept, tight coverage, but a safety working on Saunders. And there's the late push off at the end. They both had their hands on each other, but it was that last push right that the got the flag. Right in the face mask. Yep. It wasn't a hard call at all. So first down by penalty for the Sooners at the 41-yard line. Each team with four penalties on the night. And now Knight trying to be heard over the fans to his lineman. Brandon Clay puts his head down, but he's going down for no game. Trey DePriest with a tackle. And one of the advantages that Trevor Knight has is his center, Gabe Eicher, one of the smartest guys in college football, scholar athlete. Quick snap, play again, again wrapped up. And this time he's going to lose yardage. And it's Trey DePriest again. The Trey DePriest is a physical inside linebacker. He's 6'2", 245 pounds. And when he comes downhill, he and C.J. Mosley, they are loads to block. 
You think it was live before? Yep. Third and ten. Out in the flats, complete, but nowhere near the first down marker. Oklahoma started the game five for five on third down. Since that time, 0 oh for five. A renewed energy from the Alabama defense. So Jed Barnett comes in to punt again. And you got to worry about number 22. I know he had one call back tonight. But he's a big play waiting to happen. He's not going to get a chance here. He has to call fair catch and he lets it go. And it goes all the way to the end zone. <laughs> he guessed right. <laughs> he made that fair catch, ran away from it, and just hope, please spin forward and not backwards. <laughs> Well, we've had a lot of offense tonight. I got to think that we're going to have the same thing tomorrow night. The Discover Orange Bowl, Taj Boyd, great career at Clemson. Taking on Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes of Ohio State, Discover Orange Bowl. Clemson and Ohio State starting our coverage 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And there's the numbers on the season. Braxton, a great runner, obviously. The second best runner on his team behind Carlos Hyde. <laughs> yeah. He's maybe the second best runner in the Big Ten. I don't know. He's in the ballpark anyway. And Todd Boyd, who caps off his Clemson career tomorrow night, it'll be a dandy. Well, Bama was down 14. That tied their largest deficit this year. They were down 14 to Texas a and They've cut it to seven. And now looking to tie it. And Amari Cooper took his eyes off that one just for a second and dropped it. Now, when you throw on first down, I mean, I like it. I like it because defense is thinking run at least 50% of the time. And But when you miss or you drop balls and you put yourself in second and 10 against a good defense and an active defense, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Again, Derrick Henry getting the bulk of the work so far in this half at tailback for the tie. Quick throw out in the flat. Cooper looking for blockers. Got the first guy to miss, and wow. he somehow got 12 yards. Great block by Christian Jones. I mean, there were two defenders, one blocker and one receiver, and Christian Jones did a great job getting his block. Watch the block on Colvin. And then Cooper takes care of the other guy. Makes one guy miss, picks up one block, picks up a first down for Alabama. There's the block, and then there's the move. And 12 yards later, it's at the 32-yard line. And again, we have not seen a completion to O.J. Howard tonight. The tight end, he's on the left side of the Alabama line right now, and a two tight end set Bogler's in the backfield on first down. Henry, straight up the gut, and he breaks tackles, and he might go again. Wow, wow what a run. <laughs> to the 48-yard line of Oklahoma. Well, power blocking at the point of attack by Ryan Kelly, by Leon Brown, but just watch the power running behind the blocking, just running through arm tackles. I mean, that's a big man. In Dulaway, a defensive tackle had his arms around Derrick Henry, couldn't bring him to the ground. Another 19-yard gain. And they're back in Sooterland at the 49-yard line. Five and a half to go, third quarter. Here he comes again. There he goes again. Henry, another 11 yards. First down, Alabama. See, earlier in the year, the other back that would spell Yeldon was Kenyon Drake. We haven't seen Drake at all because this guy has really come on during the bowl practices, the extra work. He's picked up his assignments better, and he is showing the kind of power that he has with the football in his hand. That last one got him to the 38-yard line, and he's got 100 yards on the night, including a touchdown.
Now Yeldon's back in there to give Henry a breather instead of the other way around. Play action. McCarron. He's going to keep this. Yeah, good decision. The Oklahoma has not quite overcommitted to the run, and they're still playing coverage. So even though they ran the ball well and they tried to go play action, Oklahoma had everything covered. It's a good decision by McCarron to get yardage that he could get positively and then get out of bounds. There's Kenyon Drake, and he hasn't played a snap on offense. Second down and seven. Sooners look like they might bring an extra body. The throw is going to be out to Cooper. This time, a nice play on the corner by Zach Sanchez. Good open field stop on a guy that's hard to bring down with just one player. Tried to check to the same thing the other side. This time Christian Jones blocked inside, left the outside man unaccounted for, and Sanchez made a nice open field tackle. This might be two down territory, because Alabama doesn't have a kicker that can kick it this far. It's third down and seven, and they're at the 35-yard line. McCarron. He's got to get rid of this one because there was just too much pressure coming again. And a flag flies down to the end of the play. Intentional grounding. Offense. Number 10. Stone is walking down to spot the foul. Fourth out. Now that changes things completely. Well, if AJ's you get out, not outside the right. If you get outside box. the tackle box, you can throw it anywhere. Yeah. If you don't get outside, there has to be a receiver in the area. So any thoughts of maybe going for it on fourth down just evaporated with that. And that means Cody Mandel to punt. Jalen Saunders, speaking of dangerous guys, is back waiting at the 10-yard line. Both these punt return players tonight, Jones and Saunders, excellent at what they do on special teams. Saunders with a big touchdown return in the Oklahoma State win. Yep. And over end punt. And that one's going to bounce back. It's going to be down at the one yard line. Perfect job by Alabama and by their punter. Cody Mandel, nice job. And the Sooners in a big time hole offensively, starting at their own one yard line. Well, celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal, that's all state makes contributions to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. We've had a lot of that tonight. Since 2005, all states contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship funds. Now you're going to hear the Alabama crowd again for their defense. One false move and it could be a safety because it's not even the one yard line. It's about the two foot line. And you see where the tailback has got to line up. He's seven yards deep in the end zone. Knight to throw. And he rips one wow. out across the <laughs> 10 to Brandon Green, the tight end. Love the call. Love the confidence Bob Stutes and Josh Heupel have in their young quarterback. Stays in the pocket, delivers a strike for the first down, gives his offense some breathing room. Now another first down throw out to Clay. Just trying to look for... A block out there on the corner really didn't get much out of that at all other than another completion. And by the way, every completion for this young man is an ongoing career high. He already had all of that at halftime in completions, in yards, yeah. in touchdowns, in everything. And I think that's where these extra bowl practices helped him the most was in his advancement and development in the passing game. Always had the running ability, always had that part of it down, but... Early in the season, struggled a little bit in the passing game. Not so much tonight. Blake Bell, the other guy on the sideline, has not taken a snap tonight. Flags fly before the snap, and it's a oh, false start. Offense, number 77. On Deontay Five Savage, the left guard. Right Deontay Savage is one of those new guys playing. He's been a backup guard. 
He's a junior out of Flint, Michigan, forced into action tonight. His first start. Couldn't come on a much bigger stage. Second down at 13. As you see, four wide receivers, three to the top of your screen. And Jazz Reynolds on the right. Again, flip out to Clay, and Mosley's all over it. You know, that was a late change by Kirby Smart because C.J. Mosley was going to blitz on that play. And Kirby Smart got a hold of his attention and changed the defense at the last minute. And Mosley, instead of blitzing, was ready for this flare pass and made the tackle for short game. Now Knight's near his own goal line. Throws on the run and incomplete. No, nope, it was caught. It was Jazz Reynolds, and he held on somehow. He had to lay out for that one around the 18-yard line. Short, though. And it's fourth down and about five, maybe six. Time to punt. And if you're Jed Barnett, you want a lot of hang time. Let your guys get down and make sure Christian Jones doesn't bring it back the distance. Ooh, they came after it. They sure did. Run is short, but it does take a bounce in the favor of the Sooners, but still good field position. Really good field position. Let's check in with Holly. You know, we're covering A.J. McCarron's last home game, and I can't help but think of just what a miracle it is that he's even been able to play football. He overcame a terrific, a horrific jet ski accident when he was just five years old. His mom, Dee Dee Bonner, told me that they told her that he wouldn't even make it through the night, and if he did, that he would have brain damage and maybe lose his sight. 50 staples across his head, the scars you can still see from ear to ear, but he is here. He has overcome that and has made him a special kid. He's been kind and loving to people in a similar situation. It's made him who he is. There's mom. He's working with good field position at the 46-yard line. I think you go right back to Derrick Henry. And Henry's going to be bottled up this time. Nice job by the Sooners defense. One of the things the Sooners are doing at times is they can go to a bigger lineup. A guy, P.L. Lindley, number 40, has played a lot tonight. He's, a, he's an outside linebacker, but he's really the size of a defensive end, 255 pounds. So he's been in and out of the lineup when they're anticipating run, especially with the two tight end type sets. Mike Stoops trying to get him back out there right now and pushed him onto the field to get him there. Second down and 10. I think Oklahoma's a little confused where their coverage is going to be here. They took O.J. Howard and brought him out here. McCarron from the shotgun. Plenty of time and now running out of it. And he's going to be brought down by Jordan Wade. So it's third down and long. That's the fourth sack of the night for the Sooners. Good coverage downfield. I mean, that wasn't a blitz. Just a normal four-man rush. A.J. McCarron had plenty of time, couldn't find an opening, and the rush finally got to him. And he's just going to walk over and let quarter number three wind down. What a final 15 minutes we're going to have from New Orleans. The All-State Sugar Bowl. It's seesawed back and forth. Alabama has drawn closer, but they still trail. Fourth quarter coming up. 31, 24, OU. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Time to start the fourth quarter of the All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Oklahoma clinging to a touchdown lead. Country music superstar Toby Keith looking on, one of the big Sooner backers. Jim Ross, WWE Hall of Fame announcer. No bigger Sooner fan than him. Those guys hoping that their team can hold on here in the fourth quarter against the Crimson Tide of Alabama. A.J. McCarron again in trouble. And somehow sidestepped most everybody, but not the last one. And we're going to have a holding call as well, I think. 
You know, AJ has just, the pressure has gotten to him to where he's taken his eyes off a of downfield. He's gotten so concerned because Oklahoma, when they get you in these third down and long situations, that's when they're at their best. Holding offense number 77. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Quanjo with a holding call decline. That's a season high allowed in sacks five allowed by Alabama tonight. See the quick pressure gets AJ more concerned right up the middle. That's that's hard to deal with. Now AJ's seeing the rushers and he's not seeing the receivers down the field just running for his life at that point. So Cody Mandel has got to kick it away. And way down there on the other end is Jalen Saunders, who has a touchdown as a receiver tonight. He's got to call fair catch as well. And he dropped it, but it's by the sideline, and it's right in front of Holly. <laughs> and it's a 42-yard kick, and the Sooners hold on to it. Pinned him right on the sideline. Does come out, but jumps right back on it. Oklahoma, in the first half, they had 270 yards of offense on 37 plays. In the third quarter, they had 14 plays for 28 yards. So uh, a much different half of football so far for Oklahoma as the Alabama defense started to flex its muscles here in the second half. There's your numbers on the night. The tide was talking about. On the keeper and a late pitch. I mean, really late. Saunders takes it out of bounds. Pick up of about four. Still a little jawing going on between Trey DePriest and Jalen Saunders. See, the thing There's about 100 pounds of difference yeah. between those two guys also. The thing that Alabama has tried to take away in the second half are the quick, easy throws for Trevor Knight. Knight, deep. This one's caught. Sterling Shepard. And a first down. Oklahoma back in Alabama territory. 22-yarder. They get Jarek Williams, the safety, in coverage on Shepard. And Jarek Williams never found the football. For an injured player. And again, Jazz Reynolds tried to get to the sideline, and he went down, so play is stopped here. That play is under further review. Two guys down, actually. You know, I, I mentioned the fact early in the game on the back shoulder throw by A.J. McCarron. If there's tight coverage, that timing and ball placement win every time. Well, if a defender has his back to you, I don't care how close he is to you, the guy's still wide open. And this see, catch is under review, by the way. See, Williams never found the football. His back was to the quarterback the entire time. Shepard sees the ball all the way. And Williams, when he did react, it was late. I think that's a catch all the way as well. I don't think he ever lost possession of it or juggled it at all, but uh, they're taking a look at it. Meanwhile, Deion Blue starting corner coming off, shaking up for Alabama. Jazz Reynolds, one of the four receivers, went off to the other side for Oklahoma all in one play. Well, Maurice Smith is in, so right now both corners for Alabama are true freshmen. After First down right at midfield. Eddie Jackson, number four. Maurice Smith, number 21. I guess they're not really freshmen again, like we said about a few other players at this point in the season. Reset the play clock for 40 seconds. Thank you. Trevor Knight on first down tonight has been brilliant. Yep. And the one interception, if you missed it, was a pretty darn good throw. It was just tipped because Saunders couldn't quite get all of it on a deep pattern down the middle. Here's a screen out to Shepard. Got one block, got the corner, planted his foot, and went out of bounds, but he got a first down. See, that was a trick formation also. They had a tight end on the backside lined up as a tackle, and they had an offensive lineman out as one of the lead blockers. That's Darrell Williams out there along with Bester. And a nice first down play again for the quarterback, Trevor Knight. Boy, he almost kept that foot in bounds at the 38-yard line. And again, we've got 
a false start. Deontay Savage has had a couple tonight. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, defensive coordinator Kirby Smart told us yesterday that they are so thin in the secondary that one injury to a corner could spell catastrophe for them. Dion Blue coming out there evaluating him on the sideline. So freshman Maurice Smith, who has played hardly at all this year, just 13 tackles on the season in, in a critical time. Trevor Knight has hit his last seven passes again. First and 15. That's eight in a row. Woo. And a flag. We're going to have a targeting foul here. Oh, or was there something else happening on the outside? That. It could be an illegal pick by the offense. We'll have to wait and see. I think that's what it's going to be. Pass interference. Offense. Number three. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Number three just. That's, you know, that's an illegal pick. I mean, most times you get away with it if you're not too obvious. That time, Shepard was pretty obvious with the contact, and it backs him up. Backs him up big time. All the way back to their own 42-yard line. That's seven penalties on Oklahoma, five of them on Bob Stoops offense. So now it's first down and 30. Well, they can't get all of it back in one play. But they would like to quiet the Alabama crowd. They move Shepard, and they're going to flare it out to him. Well, he got some of it back. Well, he's shifty. I'll tell you, he and Jalen Saunders are not real big, but they are shifty in the open field. Difficult guys to get on the ground. Sterling, whose dad, the uh, late Derek Shepard, was also a wide receiver for Oklahoma back in the mid-'80s. Second down and 24. And again, Knight has a look to the sideline and now trying to relay the message over the din of the Superdome crowd. Play clock down to five right now. Better hustle. Here comes a blitz. Knight backpedaling. Throws and completes it to Clay. Wow, I thought he was going to have to throw it away almost, and he got it to his tailback. With C.J. Mosley in his face. And that's third down, but it's getting closer to being manageable. You know, I, I think Oklahoma got away with getting linemen downfield. If you throw a screen pass and the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, they can go downfield. But Clay was beyond the line of scrimmage as well. Knight, long ball on the sideline. Got it! To Bester. First down, Oklahoma. Well, we've seen Trevor Knight make a couple throws or he has just dropped it in perfectly. Bester gets separation immediately on Jackson. And when you throw it over the outside shoulder, it's almost impossible to defend. Right down the chimney, good for 34 yards. And Duvall with a hit on Clay right at the line of scrimmage. But it's second down and goal. And the clock winding down. Clay's trying to retie his cleat and trying to hurry. And when you're trying to hurry, sometimes that's a lot harder to do than you think. And you've got 80,000 people screaming at you. Knight in the pistol set with Clay right behind him. That's Bester in motion. Knight. Wanting to go to the right side. Throws finally at the end, and it's wow. a touchdown to Sterling Shepard. It looked like Joe Montana to Dwight Clark. What a throw as he extended the play, and it's a nine-yard touchdown. The fourth touchdown pass of the night for Trevor Knight. Extra point is good. 
10 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 76 yard drive and eight plays and oh, what a night for Trevor. Welcome back to the All-State Sugar Bowl as another touchdown is made of the 14-point game again. 38-24, a four-touchdown night for that young man with a headset as we take a look at tonight's Good Hands play brought to you by All-State. Well, what you're going to see that Trevor Knight saw, this guy right here, Brandon Ivory, is the guy that's going to be pursuing him. He's a nose guard, 6'4", 310 pounds. So all he's trying to do is to contain Trevor Knight. He's not trying to attack. So Trevor Knight holds that thing as long as he can until he sees a receiver open in the back, as opposed to having a guy like C.J. Mosley that would be pursuing and attack him with speed. Brandon Ivory was just trying to keep him hemmed in. Trevor Knight held it as long as he could before he threw the pass to Shepard for the touchdown. His fourth of the night. And the kickoff, Christian Jones from three yards deep. Jones weaves his way out across the 30. Nice return to the 31. Well, hopefully on Monday night, number one against number two in the Vizio BCS National Championship game will be as fun as this one. Seminoles and the Tigers looking to raise the crystal ball. 19th meeting, Auburn has a big advantage. Jameis Winston, the Heisman Trophy winner at the ACC in passing and touchdowns. And Trey Mason, what a great year he's had running the football for Auburn. All gets underway on Monday night on ESPN. Now the tide again behind by two touchdowns. From the 32-yard line, McCarron. Again, he's going to go down the sixth sack of the night by the Sooner defense. And it's Stryker again for Mike Stoops. See again, this defense was built to play in the Big 12 against spread offenses, against pass-happy offenses. It's built for speed, it's built to pressure the quarterback, and to be able to, to disguise coverages. And right now, with Alabama in the shotgun, with three and four wide receivers feeling like they have to throw, they are at a disadvantage to this defense. An unfamiliar spot for Alabama. Behind by two touchdowns. Quick throw out to Cooper. And Amari Cooper picks up about six. Time becoming a little bit of a factor as well. 9.40 remaining. First in school history with 3,000 yards thrown in a season. You think about some pretty darn good quarterbacks that played at Alabama. AJ's girlfriend looking on along with his mom. A third down and eight. See again, Oklahoma stands up, guys. Movement trying to disguise their pressure and their coverage. Here they come. He has to get rid of it in a hurry. Too much of a hurry. Kaz Everett was applying the heat, along with several others, in fact. That's why that last touchdown drive of Oklahoma was so crucial, to make it a 14-point lead again and to take the running game away from Alabama when they have the football. Cody Mandel to punts. Again, way up. In the air and a tough catch in traffic. About a six yard return. Trey DePriest planted Saunders on that punt return. Just under nine minutes to go. Oklahoma with a two touchdown lead in the football. The 2014 All-State Sugar Bowl is brought to you by All-State. Are you in good hands? Lexus, the Lexus December to Remember sales event is here, now through January 2nd. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. And the new Surface, follow at ESPN CFB for all bowl instant replays. Boy, if Alabama ever needed a three and out by the Sooners, it would be right here. 
two touchdown lead for a two touchdown underdog. I think if you're Oklahoma, you certainly want to eat some clock, but I don't think you take the air out of the football. You stay aggressive. You trust your quarterback. He was six for six for 92 yards on that last drive. He's hit his last 11 passes. Here's Brunning Clay. Trying to take it wide. He'd like to stay in bounds. I don't think he did. And C.J. Mosley and Eddie Jackson over there after a yard game. You know, I don't think you have to go hurry up. You know, use as much clock as you can while it's running, but I think you stay aggressive in terms of mixing run and pass and trusting that your young quarterback is going to make good decisions with the football in his hands. Most touchdowns in a bowl game by an uh, Oklahoma quarterback, as you saw, when you consider Landry Jones and Jason White and Josh Heupel and Sam Bradford. This kid is lighting it up. This one he's got to just get rid of as far as he can throw it. Tight coverage, press coverage by Alabama. They're going to another corner now. Cyrus Jones, number five, is in there. Eddie Jackson still in. He has replaced Maurice Smith. Of course, Deion Blue came out injured earlier, has not returned to the game. So third down and nine. This would be the play the Alabama defense needs right here. They got to get it back in the hands of A.J. McCarron. What a job on third down throwing the football for this young fella. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Oh. Ooh, almost intercepted by Jones. And they do get the stop. It's fourth down. Well, the only reason I think Trevor Knight was able to even get out to throw the football is the free man, Landon Collins, slipped. If Landon Collins doesn't fall down, I think he gets there before Trevor Knight can even escape the pocket. And Cyrus Jones able to slip in front for the deflection. Christian Jones waiting on Barnett's punt. And late fair catch taken at the 26-yard line. Eight minutes is all that's left. A guy in his 40th start. Most of them he's won. He's got a big hole that they got up right now. All right. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear tonight. Everything Goodyear is learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. A.J. McCarron's not used to being behind. <laughs> More tonight than all of this season. And, uh, credit goes to Oklahoma. They have put the pressure on Alabama from the very beginning. Eight minutes remaining for A.J. and company to do something about it. He's got Yeldon in there in the backfield with him. And he'll give it off to T.J. Might have gotten to the 31 before they track him down. Because of the fact that Oklahoma has had a 14-point lead for a good portion of this game, it's forced Alabama to stay in the shotgun, to get away from some of their power sets and their normal running game, and that's put them a little at disadvantage because just pure pass blocking, Oklahoma kind of has the upper hand. Yeldon going to be short of the first down. You saw that graphic. They've had three three-and-outs in this half, including the last two possessions. They can't afford it anymore. they got to have this one. They still have enough time with just getting around seven minutes where they can still run the football. They don't have to throw every down, but they do need to convert here. Yeldon got it by about a yard. So they move the chains and will be under seven minutes on the next snap. Oklahoma going to try to play coverage and force any throws to be underneath throws. Oh, they're going to run it again. Yeldon got about three, but this is sort of time consuming. They'll go without a huddle, obviously. Yeldon's going to come out and Henry comes back in. 
Second down and eight. Throw all the way. Henry out in the flat. Nice cut back to the middle of the field. There goes Henry. Derrick Henry. Goodbye, Mr. Henry. Touchdown. Sixty-one yards for the score, and it's far from over in New Orleans. What a cutback, and what a stiff arm on Jordan Wade to just kind of propel him into the secondary and then outrun some tired defenders. Wow. Dave Foster for the point after. Up and good. What a night for that freshman. 80 yards, uh, eight carries for 100 yards and a touchdown. And now a 61-yard touchdown possession. Only took about a minute and a half for the Tide to find themselves right back in the All-State Sugar Bowl. To a seven point game that I mentioned. I like this kid. <laughs> when a guy has a hot hand, you keep feeding him the football. Now you're going to see two guys on the Oklahoma defense that are a little bit tired. They're standing up a little bit too straight. Fundamentally, they get out of position on Derrick Henry, and he makes them pay. Runs right by Alexander and Stryker, breaks a tackle there. Yes. Derrick Henry, unbelievable night for the young man. First reception of the year yeah. is a touchdown <laughs> in the All-State Sugar Bowl. And A.J. McCarron now has a new career high in passing yards. It's, a, it's an evening for career highs for both quarterbacks. And the game very much still in doubt now with 622 remaining. Foster's kick to Roy Finch at the one-yard line. Finch to the edge and now back to the middle and he got it out to the 30 and a flag down. During the return, holding, receiving team number 82, 10 yard penalty, first down. And that doesn't help the Sooners cause. Well, the problem for Oklahoma, too, is that at this point, you'd love to be able to run the football and eat some clock, and they've only gained 72 yards running the football tonight. And the last time they had it, their last drive only took 53 seconds off the clock. They ran it on first down. They threw incomplete on second and third down. And they have to start at their own 12-yard line. Clay had to really work for one. Trey DePriest in on another tackle. And we'll work it under six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. There's Kirby Smart. The defensive coordinator working that Alabama sideline. Not accustomed to giving up this kind of point total to anybody. On second and nine, play action. Knight deep down the middle. And overshot just by a fingertip Sterling Shepard. But the incompletion stops the clock again. So again, they run for very little on first. They throw incomplete on second. Now they have third and long, and the clock stopped with 529 left in the ballgame. And if they get this stop, regardless of how deep you can punt it, Alabama would have an excellent field position. And you can hear the noise level from the Alabama faithful again for their defense. Bester has been a good matchup on the outside with his height. Third and nine, blitz coming. They go with the screen to Clay. Did he get there? Yes, he did. 
Huge conversion there. Tough running by Clay. After the catch, knowing what he needed for the first down, not wasting a lot of time dancing around, getting his shoulders right up the field. Gabe Eichert is center with the key block out in front of the screen. Watch number 64 get the block on Pagan. Got 10 yards on third and nine. So first down, Oklahoma. Sooners at their own 23. And they're going to work it down to five minutes here at the snap. Quick throw in the flat to Shepard. And Mosley got over there along with Landon Collins. We have had an unbelievable amount of huge plays tonight. You can kind of feel it from the crowd right now. They're trying to catch their breath yeah. with four and a half minutes to go. Both teams with all three of their timeouts left. Alabama at some point, if they don't get a stop here soon, is going to have to think about using some on defense. Working the playcock down as far as he can as Trevor Knights down to five. And they're going to take a timeout. So there goes the first timeout for Oklahoma. With four minutes and 11 seconds remaining, you got a senior on one side starting his 40th game and looking for his 37th win on one side. And then you got Trevor Knight, who was in and out of the lineup this year. But boy, what a night he has put together for this young guy, the redshirt freshman out of San Antonio, Texas. And as Holly said earlier, where's number nine because of another San Antonio native, Drew Brees, and he's looking a little bit like Drew tonight. Well, he started the first two games of the year, injured his knee against West Virginia, was out for a while. They went back to him to start the last two games, and he hurt his non-throwing shoulder in the Bedlam game against Oklahoma State. He's fully healthy tonight, and uh, this is by far the best he has played in the most complete game he's played, throwing the football and running the offense. 80 Sugar Bowls, and it's the first time ever both quarterbacks over 300 yards in the air. It's been that kind of evening. Here's a middle screen. And, ooh, Finch almost broke that one. Got tripped up by Adrian Hubbard, or he might have been off to the races. As it is, he got 15 yards. C.J. Mosley red screen, but he didn't read middle screen. This was a beautiful call by Josh Heupel. Mosley knew a screen was coming. He filtered out to pick up Finch, and Finch cut right back inside for another first down conversion. And now we're under four minutes, and another first down for the Sooners. So they've already accomplished what they couldn't on the last drive, and that's use some clock. Clay trying to take it wide. And he's got another first down at midfield. Nice, tough run. A pickup of 12. Nice job on the outside by Shepard, the wide receiver, getting a block on the safety. Josh Heupel has caught a brilliant game tonight. Watch Clay bounce it outside, pick up a block from Shepard on the safety, Collins, and that enabled him to get it outside for another first down. Oklahoma 10 yards on one play then 15 then 12 more and the clock winding down to the three minute mark and they've got it right at midfield. Two of the biggest names in college coaching squaring off here in a classic. Clay. Got a couple. Hubbard's draped all over him. Alabama takes its first time out. Don't forget, national championship coming up on Monday night. Number one, Florida State. Number two, Auburn with a BCS megacast. Traditional game coverage on ESPN. ESPN2 will host BCS title talk. The analysts will break down the game with celebrity guests. ESPN News, it's the BCS film room there. And to hear the sideline sounds of the game, you can turn to ESPN Classic.
about any way you want to watch it. <laughs> it's number one and number two for all the marbles, or in this case, the crystal football on Monday night. Now, Oklahoma took over way down at their own 12 yard line with 6.22 remaining. And the eighth play of the drive coming up, and they've worked it down under three minutes. Coming into the ball game, Alabama, first in the SEC, fifth in the country in total defense. And Oklahoma and their young quarterback, Trevor Knight, have kind of carved them up tonight, with the exception of the third quarter. He's almost got as much yardage as the rest of the season combined. <laughs> Second down and eight. Trying to get his fullback shifted over the, the right side. The snap came. I there think they're giving him a, a timeout. Play clock, timeout. Oklahoma. They're second. It will be 30 seconds. Now that shouldn't happen <laughs> following a timeout, that's for sure. And that's Cale Gundy. Talking to his quarterback. Jay Norbell, the co-offensive coordinator over on the right of your screen. You just saw Josh Heifel up in the press box. So that's the brain trust for Oklahoma. Take a look at key third down conversion for Oklahoma. Running Clay slips out on the little screen. Got his center, Gabe Eichert, out in front. That just hard nose running. Threw a couple tackles for a critical first down on this drive. Trevor Knight is going to be a run all the way for the quarterback. And he only got back to the line of scrimmage before the Butkus Award winner stood him up and put him down. And that's third down and eight. Timeout. Alabama. And Here's Alabama second. takes its second timeout. So not only a great game, but a chess match going on now between yeah. Bob Stoops and Nick Saban. Well, and Bob Stoops is thinking here, if I run the football, I might force Alabama to take their last timeout. If I throw it and try to convert and it's incomplete, then he gets to save his timeout and I stop the clock for him. And don't you know that's what's being discussed? On these two sidelines. One guy's won 165 games. Nick Saban, Bob Stoops, 159. Might even see another screen. It's been kind of effective for Oklahoma, particularly on this possession. We've seen a wide screen and a middle screen both to convert first downs on this drive. Two backs in there right now, Finch and Clay. Alabama thinking about bringing some pressure on Knight, and here they come. Knight over the middle. Had to thread the needle, looking for a flag as Shepard, and he got one. Pass interference coming up. It's a grab. Pass interference, defense number 20. Spot foul. I think Jarek Williams grabbed him when Shepard broke inside. Watch him reach out and grab him. Right there. That's that's a penalty. He did get the other hand in front, but with his left hand, he grabbed him as Shepard beat him to the inside. So a huge first down by penalty for the Sooners. And they've got it at the Alabama 38-yard line, and Alabama's only got one more timeout. Brennan Clay trying to bounce it outside, but he's going to lose yardage. And Alabama out. takes its final Alabama. timeout. Their third and final will be 30 seconds. So that's the last time they can stop it. And an unhappy Nick Saban on the sideline. Letting the officials have it. So it's 
Gonna be second down and 13. One team looking for their 11th win. Alabama has 11 wins. And the All-State Sugar Bowl comes down to two and a half minutes after almost four entire quarters of electricity. If you're Oklahoma, you're thinking, protect the football and stay in bounds. It's going to be a run. Stay in bounds. Cover up the football. And it's Clay who got back to the original line of scrimmage. Stopped by Duvall and the priests and now the clock becomes Alabama's worst nightmare yep. Trevor Knight being told during that last time out at this point now use all the clock you can let's not get a penalty but let's take it down as far as we can on the play clock before we snap the football they can get it down to about 150 or 151 right here Alabama just trying to get their hands back on the football for their senior quarterback. Play action. Knight just going to look for a place to land, and it's right there. So it's fourth down. Maybe Bob Stoops got a timeout before that play. I'm not sure. Prior to the snap, Oklahoma called timeout. That is their third and final. It is 30 seconds. All right, so everybody's out of timeouts. Please reset the game clock to 150, 150. They're going to put Thank six you. seconds back on the clock. Oklahoma clinging to a touchdown lead, but a big third down coming up. If they can somehow convert it, that's the ball game. Don't forget, stick around for the Ford ECS postgame show after the game. A look back at his, what has been one of the best All-State Sugar Bowls maybe ever. And there have been a lot of great ones in the previous 79 years. Again, Knight and the offense took over at the 622 mark. And now it's down to 150. Do they risk a pass here, Todd? No, I think they run it. I think they maybe put the quarterback on the edge, tell him to stay in bounds. Get what you can get. And it is a run by Clay. And he's trying to get to the edge. He's going to get dropped for a loss, actually, by Clinton Dix. Now what I think Oklahoma does is goes ahead and takes a penalty here. And then line up and punt the football. Run this all the way down. So almost a minute. Yep, take your five-yard penalty. And then get into a safe, protect punt and try to kick it down by the end zone. The, the goal here is to leave Alabama with as little time as possible. Keep in mind, though, the last Alabama touchdown only took them a minute and 35 seconds. That was because of Derrick Henry going 61 yards for a score off the arm of A.J. McCarron. There's the penalty Todd was talking about. So there's going to be less than a minute to go for Alabama once they get their hands on it. Again, one of the best punt returners in the country will drop back in Christian Jones. Barnett to kick. And they came with a little bit of pressure. 
And Jones will take the fair catch around the 16-yard line. Well, A.J. McCarron's got one last chance, but not a lot of time. Finishing his Alabama career tonight with several milestones. Three national championship rings, two as a starting quarterback. Most wins by a quarterback in Alabama history. He's been brilliant. Already won the Maxwell and the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. And now after 40 starts, he doesn't have any timeouts to work with. And he's a long ways from the Oklahoma end zone. There's the career, and it's been brilliant on and off the field. From the 18-yard line. McCarron. Pressure from behind, and the ball is out. And it's scooped up by Oklahoma. Touchdown. Stryker again, working against Cyrus Quanjo. As good as Quanjo is, Stryker knows this is pass all the way. Watch how fast off the line of scrimmage, gets around the big tackle, strips the football, and similar to the Bedlam game, Oklahoma scores on a fumble to end the game. Another look, there's Stryker from the backside. We said he was an impact player despite his lack of size, but he's got speed to burn. And he got to A.J. McCarron's arm before he could get it going forward. The ball out, and then Geno Grissom did the rest. Oh, that's some kind of effort by Grissom. Athleticism. I think when his knee touched, the ball was across the goal line. I'm with you. Man, oh man, what an effort. Seven sacks tonight for Oklahoma. A season high. Four takeaways ties a season high. You know, in, in some situations, you put a tight end over there or you have a back to chip on a guy like Stryker, but at this point in the game, you want to release as many receivers as you can, and you hope that your best offensive lineman, Quanjo, is up for the challenge. And he has had his After hands full review, all night. Ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. After the play, there was unsportsmanlike conduct by two separate players on Oklahoma, number 27 and number 14. Those fouls will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. So again, unsportsmanlike conduct, but it's really rather academic right now. One other time, there's been more than 40 put up against the Crimson Tide in a bowl game, and that's a long time ago. So the dream career of A.J. McCarron is going to have one final sour note tonight. He threw a couple interceptions, and that fumble returned by Grissom for the touchdown has pretty much all but iced it. Speaking of ice, I'm sure there's some in that bucket when they find Bob Stoops. Thirty-six and four as a starter, and half those losses in his final two games. How about that? Mike Honeycutt in for the point after. 45-31, Oklahoma. 28 points off the four Alabama turnovers. The crazy thing is coming into the game, in 12 games, Oklahoma had only forced 20 turnovers. It's not like they've been doing that all season. And they forced four tonight. And not only do they force them, they convert them all into scores. Pretty soon, he's going to crack a smile. But it's probably going to be 47 seconds from now. See that guy in the white coat? That's Jay Bullware, the special teams coach. Came to Oklahoma from Auburn, so very familiar with Alabama. It's kind of a double whammy for him. The Iron Bowl victory a few weeks ago by Auburn, and now beating Alabama in the Sugar Bowl as a member of the Oklahoma staff. And Stryker had a huge night. Adrian Peterson saying that away, kid. And Trevor Knight. 
<laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable is right. And see, the thing with Stryker is the game became a game where he could be a factor. As long as it was close or Alabama was leading and they could get in two tight ends and pound the running game, right. he becomes a little bit of a liability because of his size against bigger guys. But when it became a passing game and they could put him on the edge and use his skills, he became a monster for Cyrus Kwanjo to try to handle. I would say Oklahoma as you look forward to this team, we'll be settling on Trevor Knight as their quarterback <laughs> as they get ready to, to think about 2014. What That's a so performance. So. Yeah. Well, they're about to be 5-2 and two in All-State Sugar Bowl appearances. Alabama's played in this game more than anybody else has. This was their 14th Sugar Bowl. And it went right down to the final minute before it was really decided. And again, the kick now has to come from the 10 yard line because of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And the ball falls off the tee. We're going to have to reset it here. Brad, remember this this Oklahoma team that has scored 45 points on Alabama's defense did it with an offensive line that had reshuffled three guys in different positions tonight. A guy in Bronson Irwin playing right tackle who had never played tackle. Deontay Savage starting at left guard, his first start. They moved the right tackle over to left tackle. Unbelievable performance by the Oklahoma offensive line. And that one hits one of the Alabama players up front, and I think Oklahoma's got it. <laughs> How about that? Going to be a fitting finish to a remarkable night. They're, they're just trying, trying to squib yeah, this. This isn't an outside it. kick. No, it's a squib. It just hits Reggie Raglan right between the one and the eight. <laughs> and Gastelum is there on the special teams to basically ice the game right now. And they finally got to Bob Stoops. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, double duty. <laughs> what, what a great coaching job this year by Bob Stoops and his staff considering the injuries at quarterback the injuries and the loss of some critical players throughout this season maybe as fine of a coaching job as he's had in a long time and his 160th career victory at Oklahoma is definitely sugar sweet a two touchdown underdog wins by two touchdowns over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. 45 31. And two of the best in the business will meet for the handshake. I think Holly's searching Bob out. Big game, Bob. Just won a big game, Holly. Well, Coach, you told me that your kid's about to scratch and claw and fight for everything they got this year. What was the moment in this game where you thought they fought the hardest? Well, I, you know, there, there are a lot of moments. I, I guess uh, I, I can't, you know, just the second quarter there when we started fighting back and started to get the momentum uh, and ended up with a big defensive plays. Uh, AJ, hey. Getting a hug from AJ McCarron, a very special moment for Coach. Uh, so anyway, I'm just proud of our players. I very, feel very fortunate. Uh, they're a great group, and uh, so it's, it, it was a fun day. Alabama's given up 10 sacks all season. You guys had seven tonight. What was the key to getting after it like that? You know, we can rush. Uh, uh, two things. We've got individual pass rushers, and then I thought Mike Stoops, our defensive coaches, our blitzes really came home. Our blitzes really, I thought, uh, worked their protection, you know, pretty well, and we got to them. How about your redshirt freshman Trevor Knight playing in his first big bowl game? Uh, he lit it up. Now he, he he took care of the football, made great throws, was competitive, showed everybody what we've been seeing for a couple of years. He's uh, he can he has a chance to be really special. Thank you, Coach. All right, Holly. Thank you. Trevor Knight on the Knights, career highs in everything, and the most ever by an Oklahoma quarterback in a bowl game, and that's saying something. And he's about ready to talk to Holly Rowe. Well, you look so comfortable out there, particularly in the first half when your offensive tempo was really going. Why were you so comfortable? 
you know, just playing with confidence, knowing that I have trust in my Lord up above to give me the confidence to play, and just knowing that he has my back through every situation. You know, I've battled a lot of adversity throughout the year, but just to come out and get a win like this and let these seniors go out on a, on a good note, it's unbelievable. I thought for a moment, you know, you had on number nine, you had that sweet fade into the end zone in the first half, playing in Drew Brees' hometown. What was that like to meet him and have his influence in this game? Well, Drew Brees is one of my, if not my best favorite player um, of all time, you know, just the way he leads, the way he plays. Um, to come in here to his house and, and play like I did, it, you know, it's a dream come true. Wear number nine like him. He's down from close to where I'm from. Um, just something special. All right, this is your first bowl game, a huge win over Alabama. What kind of momentum will this give you, propel you into next season, Trevor? I think it's huge for our program, you know, uh, to get a win like this after nobody gave us a chance throughout the year. And, you know, playing all three quarterbacks, testament to Blake and Kendall, just sticking it out, and myself as well. Um, you know, we got to ride this into next year. We know we got, you know, a lot of guys coming back, um, but we can't settle with this. You know, we want, we want the main goal, and that's the big one. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you so much. I think we know who the MVP is of the Knights. The All-State Sugar Bowl goes to the Sooners of Oklahoma. Their 11th win, their 11-2. Alabama's season ends at 11-2. The trophy presentation and a lot more coming up after the break. It'll be the Ford BCS postgame show. Final, Oklahoma 45, Alabama 31. Not the way A.J. McCarron wanted to go off, but congratulations to him on a brilliant Alabama career. This post game report is presented by Ford. Go further. And welcome back to the Ford BCS post game show from the Superdome in New Orleans. A super game, a classic All State Sugar Bowl. Won by the team that wasn't supposed to win. And this play ended it and actually made the score a little more lopsided than it really was. 45 31 as we get out of the trophy presentation and our own Reese Davis. Reese. Next year, this All State Sugar Bowl is going to be a national semifinal. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to take a lot to top this great performance in this great game that we just saw between Oklahoma and Alabama. First, want to congratulate the Crimson Tide on a great season. And moreover, congratulate the champions of the 80th edition of the All-State Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma Sooners. Now, please welcome the president of the All-State Sugar Bowl, Mr. Jay Bat. Jay, we've got chaos up here, brother. Yeah, it's a good one, though. It's great chaos. Listen, on behalf of the uh, Sugar Bowl committee, I want to congratulate the Oklahoma Sooners and Coach Bob Stoops on an outstanding victory and being champions of the 2014 All-State Sugar Bowl. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all the fans out there. Uh, we appreciate you. Love my team. Uh, way to fight, guys. Uh, great night here tonight. Thank you, Reese. Bob, we talked yesterday, and you talked about the struggles that you guys had this season in terms of keeping players healthy and how it sort of chips away at you little by little. How would you define the strength and the resilience that this team showed to turn in a performance like this? It's re pretty remarkable the way everybody just kept their attitude, kept fighting. Another guy steps in for somebody. Uh, the whole offensive line is rotating from position to position. Everybody just held it together and kept fighting. How would you describe the play of Trevor Knight? Uh, exceptional tonight. Uh, Trevor was outstanding, uh, really excited about everything that he did, and is showing the talent that he truly has. Want to bring in now, just for a second, the chairman and the president and the CEO of All State, Mr. Tom Wilson. Tom? Coach, this trophy represents not only a hard fought victory, but it's the creation of new memories memories for your seniors, for your players, for your students, for your alums, for all Sooners. Besides that, Coach, on a personal note, I have to say your passion, your grit, playing with your head and your heart has made a difference for college football. Thank you. Congratulations, and savor this moment forever. Careful, Bob. It's heavy. Careful. As the confetti comes down, if we can get the chairman... 
of the Sugar Bowl Executive Committee. Lance Afric here. Hey, I've got to find Trevor. Do we have Trevor in here? Judge Afric is going to give you a trophy here. It's hard to park Sooners out of the way right now. Judge has the most outstanding player of the All-State Sugar Bowl, the quarterback from the Sooners, Trevor Knight. Trevor, congratulations. Here's the trophy. The All-State Sugar Bowl congratulates you and the great fans of the University of Oklahoma on a spectacular performance. Congratulations. So much. Thank you. Yeah, Trevor! Trevor, when did you know that you were going to carry the load at quarterback tonight because Bob kept us in the dark all week. Man, it's been, you know, we faced adversity all year, the ups and downs. Um, hats off to our quarterback group, Blake, Kendall, the whole group, uh, Coach Hype, just letting us know that we got to be ready at all times. And uh, to come out here, get a win like this for our program and for our seniors, it's really something special. You had five completions this year of 20 yards or more. You had, you had more than that in the game tonight. What changed for you during the time off between the end of the regular season and this game tonight? You know, it's just finding that confidence, um, you know, knowing that my Lord Jesus Christ has it, has my back in every situation. Um, you know, my team surrounding themselves with me, making sure I remain confident even if I'm not playing. Um, and then just Blake and Kendall picking me up through every situation. Uh, it's, it's been truly a special year, and I'm just really happy for our seniors to go out this way. You've been a humble guy, but so much of the talk this week centered on Alabama, not in Pasadena. You guys were overwhelmed, big underdogs. How big a role did that play in your mindset coming into this game? You know, we've been battling the underdog story all year long, and uh, just to come out here and show the world that, you know, the Sooners are back, it's really something special. Um, you know, hats off to our guys. Hats off to the way we played. Um, we got to keep pressing forward to next year, but we're excited about it. You know what's back? A little Sooner magic. Trevor, congratulations. Brad, the Oklahoma Sooners, champions of the All-State Sugar Bowl. All right, Reese, thanks. Mr. Blackledge, you and I finish our fifth year together. Yeah. We haven't seen too many better than this one. That was a good football game right there. It certainly <laughs> was. Final score, 45-31. Sooners pull an upset and win their fifth All-State Sugar Bowl. Our congratulations to Bob Stoops and the Sooners. They came out an underdog. They're going back to Norman, a champion. And what a thrilling night.